Last year, Jimmy Johnson's Miami Hurricanes swept away college football's national championship. They were undisputed number one, going unbeaten in 11 games, and they did it with flair. The Hurricanes were the force in 87, and they faced their biggest challenge against the cross-state team that has become their biggest rival, the Florida State Seminoles. Tonight, those Seminoles begin the season as number one, and Bobby Bowden's team is primed for a run at the title. Last year, they had Miami up against the wall, only to have their championship dreams ruined by a failed two-point diversion. You can bet they have waited a whole year to get even. The defending champion plays preseason number one, Florida State against Miami, here on CBS Sports. Sports welcomes you to College Football 88. The bright lights of the city of Miami in the background. A city that is accustomed to hosting big games. But seldom have they had one this big in the month of September. The defending national champion Miami Hurricanes come out in their opener and take on the preseason number one. Their cross-state rival, the Seminoles of Florida State. A game worthy of prime time. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. So the defending champion against the preseason, number one, and something really has to give here tonight, Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes have won 32 consecutive regular season games. Yet go back to Bobby Bowden's marvelous start at Florida State. In his first year in 1976, it's the only year that his Seminoles have lost an opening game, 11 consecutive opening day wins. And a pleasure for me to bring back my analyst partner, Pat Hayden, and Pat, I hope you had a marvelous summer with the family. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right. You know, you can identify with Florida State and the pressures of being a preseason number one. You were preseason number one at USC. What year was that? It was night, way back, 1974, and there is a lot of pressure, but I didn't feel it that opening game against Arkansas. I only threw four interceptions in the first half. We lost that game, but went on to win a national championship, and the point, I think, Brent, is both of these teams are very, very legitimate national championship contenders. The winner today controls his own destiny. The loser is going to need some help, but still can win a championship. All right. Any pressure on the Canes? Oh, I think so. Any defending champions always have pressure on them, but these guys are some of the loosest athletes and most confident athletes I've ever been around. All right. You know, this was the first full day of college football, and tonight there are some games going on, so let's check in with Jim Nance in New York. Jim? All right, September 3rd, then a game with national championship implications. For Florida State, they will receive a warm greeting here tonight in the Orange Bowl. 17,000 of their fans here from Tallahassee. A year ago, it was only a bitter loss at the hands of the Hurricanes up in Tallahassee that prevented Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles from winding up the national champion. Instead, it was Miami capturing the big one against Oklahoma right here in the Orange Bowl on New Year's night. And John Dockery, I don't think the Seminole players have forgotten that one-point loss of a year ago. They have absolutely not forgotten it, Brent. I was in both locker rooms only moments ago. And the Seminole players were focused, they were confident, they were loose, but on everybody's mind was this, unfinished business. A lot of the players are wearing this under their equipment just remind themselves what Miami did to them last year. Across the way, Miami has its own slogan, and that is all it takes is all you've got in 88. And Brenton Pat, you may remember Steve Walsh and Jimmy Johnson telling us they have an awful lot, except some of it is tested, untested, and young. Now back to you, Brent. Yeah, exactly, John, and some of the youngsters will be tested here tonight. Pat, the coach also mentioned Steve Walsh. How did you find him in your conversations with him earlier? Well, Brent, it's amazing how much he's matured, both physically, and he's just seemed so much more confident, and rightfully so. All the questions about him last year have been answered. He won in his opener. He brought his team from behind a couple times, and he won the big game, won the Orange Bowl and the National Championship. So all the comparisons to the great quarterbacks in the past, we shouldn't make those comparisons anymore because he's a legitimate college quarterback. On the other side of the ball for Florida State, the return of Chip Ferguson. Yeah, I was struck by 
but Chip Ferguson, he's a little bit anxious and nervous, and rightfully so. He hasn't played much in the last year and a half, although he has thrown 18 touchdowns in his career at Florida State. He's played some there before, but the questions that Doug Walsh a year ago, now Doug Ferguson, they're going to have to be answered tonight. One other huge question that will be answered, the kicking game on both sides. We'll develop that story as the game progresses. So Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes win a national championship. Remember the end of the game? No one was happier than Jimmy. He told us his feelings. Well, yeah, I don't know that I can actually describe the, the feeling. Uh, it, you know, it was absolute ecstasy. I mean, you know, just, you know, my body tingled. I felt so good. And I, and I think the reason I felt so good was not only winning the championship, but because we had been just totally devastated the year before when we should have won the championship but didn't and lost uh, in the last game against Penn State and we were as low as low could be uh, I think that's what made the championship uh, so nice winning it a year ago and now Jimmy will try to get that tingling feeling all over again win back-to-back -back titles no team in college football has done it since Alabama back in 1979 and a huge step in the season opener for Jimmy Johnson and the Canes. confrontation and the defending champions against preseason number one coming up live. CBS Sports presents college football live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. It's the Florida State Seminoles versus the Miami Hurricanes. Tonight's CFA game is sponsored by Michelob. Michelob is a proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team. Armor All Protectant. It protects and beautifies every time you wash your car. And by the heartbeat of America, today, Chevrolet. I'm here in the Orange Bowl as we get ready to start this confrontation. Humidity at 70%. Only a 20% chance of those thunderstorms, however. And depth could become a huge factor in this game. Florida State won the flip. The Seminoles deferring. So Jimmy Johnson and Miami take the football. The Seminoles will have the wind at their back here in the Orange Bowl, blowing out of the open end. Randall Hill, number three, who hopes to replace Irvin and Blades and Perriman as one of the wide receivers, is their top threat as a return man. This is Richie Andrews, who will kick it off for the Seminoles, a left-footed soccer-style kicker. He'll do all the field goal chores tonight. He has a very strong leg. If there's any wind still left, he could drive it out of here. It does not, however. There will be a return for the Canes. And Hill trying to swing outside. He will not get to the 20-yard line as Deion Sanders, their great cornerback, came up and got him out of bounds. The Miami offense. The offense which won a national championship under the leadership of Steve Walsh of St. Paul, Minnesota. He'll have it running backs, two good ones, although somewhat untested. Then the wide receivers, Randall Hill, whom you just saw, Dale Dawkins, number 11. For a tight end, number 84, Rob Chudzinski. That trio, they have caught only two passes in competition for the Hurricanes. First down for Walsh. Off the draw, he fakes it. Complete to Gary coming out of the backfield. Pat Cleveland, Gary's a great receiver. Miami uses the fullback better than anybody in college football. You're going to see a terrific play action fake here to Conley. It's a little counter action. By that time, Gary had slipped out of the backfield. Walsh tried to go deep, came off his primary receiver, and found the very soft hands of Cleveland Gary. Gary was at Georgia before he transferred to Miami. Now they pitch to him behind the left side of the line with Felton Hayes tripping him up. The offensive line, a veteran group, 
Rod Holder out of Chicago is the center. The guards alongside him, another Chicagoan. Mike Sullivan is there with Bobby Garcia. The tackles, Darren Bruce and John O'Neill. O'Neill was ineligible to play against Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl because of steroid use. But he's back, a starting tackle here tonight. From the eye, they pitch, and this time it is Conley behind the right side of the line. And Felton Hayes, number 46, brings him down for the Seminoles. The defensive front for the Seminoles, and one that must show leadership. Odell Haggins, a tremendous performer in the middle. Corey Sr. and Steve Gabbard are alongside him. They operate out of the 3-4. Here are the four linebackers. Felton Hayes, Keith Carter. They operate in the middle. Shelton Thompson, a tremendous performer outside with Kevin Grant. What this quartet needs, that linebacker, is the leadership of a Paul McGowan. Something the coaches will be looking for. The Canes are out to their 47-yard line. Third and inches, and a timeout will be called by Miami and Steve Walsh, who did not like what he saw, and will come over to Jimmy Johnson's sideline. Interesting formation on third and short, and it really does tell you a little bit about Miami's type of offense. They came out with three wide receivers. Didn't like what he saw and called the timeout. And we'll be right back to the Orange Bowl. Bowl in Miami. You know, a year ago, Steve Walsh in the last 16 minutes hit three scoring passes for 148 yards against these Seminoles. It was the big play, and here on third and short, Deion Sanders cannot stop Cleveland Gary, who gets the first down. I really like this Cleveland Gary, and the reason I like him is they can use him in so many different ways. We saw him catch a long pass. He ran the ball off tackle, and then he threw a block, and this time on short yardage. He's big enough to get you the tough yard when you need it, but he's got tremendously soft hands to be able to catch the ball. And uh, as I said, Miami really likes to use their fullback. First down for the Hurricanes, near midfield, just inches short of it. Running the draw package with Conley, who squirts free. Finally out of bounds, close to the 20-yard line, with Tracy Sanders in pursuit. A 25-yard burst for Conley. And Brent, a real nice call when a defense is all charged up at a big game like this is a counter. Watch the left guard here, Mike Sullivan, as he's going to make a nice little move on the counter action. And watch the linebackers as they step for the counter. The left guard and the right guard, Barbie, got Bobby Garcia, number 50, steps in and makes the play. And then Conley's got tremendously quick feet. The big linebacker was not able to step up in that hole and make the stop for the Seminoles. The Hurricanes are on the move on their first series. Walsh goes for the bundle, incomplete in the end zone. He was throwing toward Conley, his 5'9", 170-pound running back out of the backfield. And Steve Walsh wishes he had that one back because he had Conley wide open for the touchdown. Lined up to his left, just ran a little go route and beat his man quickly. The Florida State secondary led by prime time. Deion Sanders, number two. He'll go high in the first round. Stan Shiver, a hitter, although he was unable to catch up to Conley in that 25-yard run. Second and 10 for the Canes. They pitch to Conley. Cuts back, and that time he was smothered by Odell Haggins, the nose man, 6'2", 252 pounds. Right of your screen, number 53, the nose guard, Odell Haggins. He had a sensational year. He started out as a linebacker, but moved to nose. And what he's got great feet and hands and strength, fights off the center's block and really runs down the line of scrimmage to make the play. Four substitutes on defense for Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles on this third down. He'll put the nickel package in, fully expecting Walsh to come with the pass. Hill and Dawkins are out to his left. Time over the middle and incomplete. Under pressure that time from Odell Haggins again, the big nose man coming hard. That's one of the amazing things that Florida State got last year, and we've seen it again already this year, is Odell Haggins putting pressure on the quarterback from the nose guard spot. You ordinarily don't see many nose guards putting too much pressure on them. The first time ever for Carlos Huerta. A walk-on here at Miami, a 39-yard field goal attempt. 
The holder is Kirk Sandifer. He'll put it down, and you know the butterflies are there for the young man here in the Orange Bowl. And the light hash mark. He puts it right through. Miami leads. Huerta hits his first attempt for the Canes. It's three to nothing, and explosive Florida State is coming to bat. We are back in the Orange Bowl, and I was just saying to Pat Hayden, I don't think I have ever heard an arena alive like this one is in the month of September. Edgar Venice will kick it off. He has a somewhat stronger leg than Huerta. The kicking game's so important. No one returns kickoffs any better than these two, Keith Ross and Dexter Carter. They worked a lateral for a touchdown against the Canes two years ago in the Orange Bowl. This is Ross coming out from the two. Squeezes all he could, and he's still short of the 20, and did he take a hit that time? Now it'll be up to Chip Ferguson, who returns as a starter, his first starter since he was a sophomore. And I asked him how he'd feel. I think there'll be a lot of excitement there. Um, I think there'll be a little bit of nervousness. And um, I think, um, you know, I'll be ready. I think, um, I guess, a lot of excitement is mainly what I'll feel. Here he is, the first down from the eye. They give motion. They'll fake the reverse, and they throw it to Lewis. <laughs> Running Ron Lewis on the end around for a first down on the first play. That fooled me. I thought they were showing fake, and it was a 14-yard game. Don't you love Bobby Bowden? You know, most teams run reverses once every papal election, but Bobby Bowden runs these all the time. It's part of his natural offense. Here's the fake. It's a great play on the first uh, play of the game when the Miami defense is all charged up over pursuing the nice handoff to Lewis. He ran 10 of these a year ago. Picks up the nice first down. Ball is out to the 34-yard line. Sammy Smith, number 33. The big man in that backfield. They show it again. Lewis fumbles and falls on the ball. Back to back and around. As I said, Bobby, this is Bobby Bowden's offense. It is not a changeup here. This is a part of his base offense, but this was actually just a bad handoff. They give the ball here to Sammy Smith. Lewis is coming around again. Good penetration there by Mark, number 94, I think really caused the bad exchange, and that's a big loss. A loss of 10 yards, second and 20 for Bowden and the Seminole. formation Anthony and Lewis split out wide as the wide receivers for Florida State Ferguson straight back almost intercepted Bernard Clark the middle linebacker dropped back and he should have caught it it was thrown right to him Chip Ferguson has had the reputation and the reason he was benched in his earlier in his career was locking in on a receiver but Bernard Clark, number 57, he is right here in the middle of your screen. He's just going to drop back, and his only responsibility is to read the quarterback. It's a zone defense. He reads Chip Ferguson all the way. The ball is thrown softly. It should have been caught, but clearly he was in position. Bernard Clark playing the middle because Rod Carter is out with an injury. On third and 20, Ferguson throws the screen pass. Sammy Smith, the runner. Does not get the first down as big Bill Huckins, the defensive end, brings him down, but he got 15 yards back. And a nice call there for Chip Ferguson to try to settle him down a little bit. We heard the sound bite of him being a little bit nervous. A little screen pass gets the confidence going. That's just what he needed, even though they didn't get the first down. The walk-on punter for Florida State, Tim Corlew. And if anyone is more nervous than Ferguson, it's Corlew. Miami expected to come hard at some point in this game against the walk-on. Gets this one off. Back deep, Daryl Spencer. And he'll let it bounce dead. So Miami, having kicked the field goal on its first possession, leads Florida State 3 to nothing. A 41-yard punt for the young man. And we'll be right back to the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Orange Bowl, and they talk about Florida State, the preseason number one, but here in the southeast, they will tell you that there are two sleepers. LSU shutting out Texas A&M. We'll get to the other one momentarily. This is first and ten for Walsh and the Hurricanes. They lead 
Florida State. Three to nothing. They run Cleveland Gary, who batters straight ahead, and Eric Hayes, number 78, was the first Seminole to hit him. That other score that I alluded to, and the team that everyone says has a chance to surprise folks in the Southeastern Conference, the Bulldogs of Georgia. Keep an eye on them this year. They beat Tennessee 28 to 17, and Hampton rushed for 196 yards and two scores. Now second and about five for the Canes. The backs are split. Drops it off to Gary. Gary rambles for another Miami first down. Deion Sanders and Leroy Butler make the stop. 17 yards pass. Miami has the most sophisticated passing offense, I think, in college football. This is a little check out of the backfield by Cleveland Gary. He delays in the backfield. Walsh looks downfield. Nothing there. He just dumps the ball off there to Cleveland Gary. I talked to Steve Walsh this week about Gary. He says, I just love his hands. He's got the softest hands on the team. Now they run Gary again behind the left side of the line. And this is Kelvin Smith who was forced to make the tackle. So the surge going Miami's way. And one of the interesting things we have seen from this Miami team, we've seen finesse them throwing the ball downfield and dumping the ball off to Gary. And we've seen power. Good charge by the offensive line, giving the ball to the big fullback, Gary, at 226 pounds. Giving Jimmy Johnson's Hurricanes a second and short near midfield again. They're on their own 47-yard line. Only four yards to go for the first down. They show the slot formation to the left. They run to the short side of the field with Conley, who slipped the tackle and squeezed out for a first down. A brilliant twisting effort by Conley with Shelton Thompson, the outside linebacker, bringing him down. You know, Brent Conley is only 5'9 and 170 yards, but sometimes small guys like him are tough inside runners. Conley's a strong runner, a blocker, and perhaps one of the most exciting running, running backs in college football will break some tackles even though he's 170 pounds. Only 5'9, but back in high school, he was a weight lifting champion in his weight class. Durability is a key question when you have a running back the size of Leonard Conley. He's off to a superb start here tonight. Walsh off the draw package throws complete. The tight end, Chudzinski with his first reception as a Miami Hurricane. Well, we see one thing that Steve Walsh has done, too, is bring his wide receivers along slowly. Very inexperienced coming into the game, so Steve Walsh has started this game dumping the ball off to his backs, primarily Cleveland Gary, and there he hit his tight end, Chazinski. That's Andre Brown, 6'3", 212-pound senior receiver out of Chicago who brought the play in on the Hurricane sideline. Second down for Walsh. They pitched to Conley the tail, and he has smothered that time. Felton Hayes, number 46, leading the defensive charge for the Seminoles. So many great quarterbacks have come through this program at Miami. Here's how Walsh compares after the first 11 games. That's the average of the big three. He has held up quite nicely, hasn't he? Yeah, I think it's time to actually quit comparing him to the other guys. He is a legitimate star, I think, as a college football quarterback now. We shouldn't be comparing him to other guys. He can really play. 6-3, great size. Looks over the defense. And complete to Chudzinski going back to his tight end for another first down. They get to the 35. Offensive coordinator Gary Stevens with this very superb pro-style passing attack. And the Kings come right at you with it. And Pat, it seems to be so hard for defensive coordinators because during the week they don't practice against a system such as this. You're absolutely right. A team that gets as much out of their tight end and their fullback as Miami does, they're very hard to defend because college teams, including Florida State, don't see other college teams who utilize those two players. Walsh is 406 for 50 yards already. The pitch, Harry maintains his balance. Now the ball finally comes free, but was it dead already? The whistle had blown. There was not a fumble on the play. Well, when your fullback is getting that much production and that much use, it's up to the inside linebackers, I think, of Florida State to really make the play because the inside linebackers key the fullback as ordinarily the fullback tells you where the ball is going to go. So Florida State's inside linebackers are going to have to do a better job on Cleveland Gary. 
missing from that offense tonight, Michael Irvin. He'll be starting for the Dallas Cowboys tomorrow. Brett Perriman, he'll be playing for the New Orleans Saints. Warren Williams, who's done a superb job with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm sure they're all watching their former teammates here right now. Second down and eight for Walsh and the defending national champions. Goes to the sideline, Randall Hill. Randall Hill with great speed, and there was a penalty marker thrown as Hill came down. Tracy Sanders forced to cover him over there on that side. Nice audible there by Steve Walsh. Looks like officials calling a face mask there. But Steve Walsh came up, and every any time you give the Miami... Five yard face mask on the defense. Watch the cushion area as he makes the catch. You're going to see the face mask by number 16, Tracy Sanders there. Goes in with the right hand. Good call by the official. But anytime Walsh sees a big cushion by the defensive back, he's just going to audible to that little quick out, and that's what he did there to Hill. Miami leading Florida State three to nothing, and on the move again. As the result of that face mask penalty, the Hurricanes have a first and ten on the Seminoles' 22-yard line. 4:48 remaining in the first quarter, and even against the wind, Miami has controlled this football game so far. Off that draw package, Conley again, first down, and the ball came free. Florida State has recovered the fumble. Steve Gabbard falls on the ball, a turnover by Conley and the Hurricanes. Well, one of the reasons Miami did uh, won the championship last year, they did not fumble the ball much. Big hole here for Conley off the draw action. Terrific cutback runner. We've seen that twice now. Number 16, Tracy Sanders, knocked the ball loose, and Gabbard was there to make the play. Here's the strip again by Sanders, number 16. He was the man who just had the face mask called on him. The ball knocked out of his hands, and there's Gabbard to make the recovery. A big play by Tracy Sanders. He gives Florida State first and 10 on their own 15-yard line. Chip Ferguson was a little shaky on his first series. Let's see if he settled down and if they feature Sammy Smith, number 33. Bringing right straight ahead in the Hurricanes front seven equal to the challenge. Jimmy Jones hits him first. Number 67, you're going to see Russell Maryland coming right at you, make a play there on Sammy Smith as well. He's the defensive tackle on their left side, beats the block very quickly on the inside charge and slows down Smith until someone from behind gets to him. Yeah, check that Jimmy Jones. That was definitely Russell Maryland. Finger High School in Chicago who came through and laid licking on it. Now, last year, Smith exploded for 189 yards, and the Miami defense determined not to let him rage out of control here again. They'll bring Smith, who finds an opening, and got all he could out of that hole. Willis Pegues making the stop on Smith. Chip Ferguson, the leader here, and Sammy Smith, the tailback. Dane Williams, one of several fullbacks we'll see for Bobby Bowden. His receivers are superb. Terry Anthony and Ronald Lewis. And Tom O'Malley from Darien, Connecticut, is the tight end. <laughs> I knew you'd get that in. This is third and short. Time remaining in the first quarter. They swing to Victor Floyd, and Floyd, a reserve, Picks up the first down for the Seminoles with the veteran Donald Ellis, number 29, bringing him down. Again, you see a characteristic play call by Bobby Bowden. It was third and about one. Ordinarily, a team would run a power play off tackle, but he fakes the ball inside and flips it outside to Victor Floyd. Ordinarily, a tailback playing fullback tonight. The Seminoles with the first and 10 on their own 27-yard line. Edgar Bennett. Number 22 has checked into Coach Bowden's backfield behind Ferguson. Duke has led Northwestern all the way in that one. Off the draw, Floyd again. Buried, and the charge was led by Bernard Clark. The offensive line for the Seminoles ranks as one of the finest in the nation. Jason Kuyper is formerly a guard. Now the main man in the middle. Check out the haircuts, if you will. <laughs> Tony Omens and Big John Brown, number 50. And then Pat Tomberlin and like Joey Iannetta <laughs> mugging a little bit for the camera. Tomberlin goes at 303 pounds, number 72. 
He's a load to be blocking on you all night long. Second and third now for the Seminoles. Run the tail back off that draw package. Greg Mark is there, and every yard a tough one for the Seminoles. Brent, you mentioned uh, Pat Tomberlin. He's a guy that, although he's a big guy, 305 pounds, most offensive linemen, big guys, are kind of passive guys, but he's an aggressive guy, a vicious competitor with terrific feet, and that's what separates him from other big guys, big passive offensive linemen. It'll take Earl Bruce some time at Northern Iowa. He's being laced tonight by Pittsburgh. Double tied in. That's the power eye formation for the Seminoles. This is third and short. The fullback straight ahead for the first down for Florida State. Linebacker Randy Shannon, the veteran number 22, bringing him down. Now the defensive front that we have talked about, Maryland and Greg Mark are in the middle. A 4-3, somewhat unusual in college or even professional football today. Pegues and Hawkins are both veterans. Bernard Clark forced to go into the middle because Carter is out with an injury. Randy Shannon and Maurice Crum, number 49. Crum is being given his first start. He lines up behind Hawkins, and it's nice to have the veteran number 54 in front of you. Hawkins said he was concerned about Crum in the Orange Bowl, but he turned in such a performance that he forgot all about him as the game wore on. Now off first and 10. Ferguson to throw. Overthrows, and it's intercepted by Miami. Bobby Harden with the interception to the 20-yard line. is forcing this ball early in the ball game. The play action fake to Sammy Smith. He's got time and protection, but the ball is thrown high. The receiver was actually covered, thrown high. No chance for the receiver to catch it. Bobby Harden is right there to make the play. A terrific return of 36 yards gives the Hurricanes a first and 10 on the Seminole 20-yard line. Miami 3, Florida State nothing. On first down, they bring Conley. The man who fumbled the ball will bring it on the next carry for Coach Jimmy Johnson. Freeman, number 10, making the hit for FSU. Okay, inside the 20-yard line, Miami has been so good over the last three or four years because they don't really change their offense inside the 20. Jimmy Johnson believes you have to be just as aggressive inside the 20-yard line as you are outside it. Seconds in the first quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Audible by Walsh. Throws complete to Dawkins, who was stopped short of the first down. Alfonso Williams, 26, bringing him down. And that wraps up our first quarter. The partisan Miami crowd will tell you who's ahead here as the defending national champion Hurricanes lead preseason number one Florida State three to nothing. College football on CBS will return after this message and a word from your local station. The game summary of the first half, Miami has outrushed Florida State. The important number of the score, it's three to nothing. Miami over Florida State at the end of one. Jimmy Johnson, I'm sure, down at his home in Port Arthur, Texas. C.W. and Aline, his mom and pop are watching, and they couldn't be prouder of that young man who grew up down there and went on to win a national championship right here in Miami last year. On third and short, Gary breaks free. Hammers his way inside the five-yard line. Miami first down. Think of the fullbacks that Miami has had the last few years. Highsmith and then Mel Bratton a year ago. Well, Cleveland Gary, believe me, is in the same mold. Catches the ball extremely well out of the backfield, and he can get you the tough yard as he does here. Good block, lead block by Conley. He bounces it right outside, breaks the tackle of Freeman number 10, and picks up the first down. I really like this Gary. Our eye for the Canes on first and goal. Walsh barks out the signal at the line of scrimmage. Here runs Gary. Gary cuts inside, and Deion Sanders takes him on, and Gary beats him. Gary whips prime time for a Miami touchdown.
compete this year. Easy now, big fella. Well, they, 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 have an awful, <laughs> they have an awful lot of talent. They'll be as good as anybody on their schedule. I, Barry Switzer just jumped off his couch in Norman. Tom Osborne's on the phone. But they look good, folks. Where the hammer is that extra point? <laughs> I'll tell you, Steve Walsh has made about four or five audibles. This was one here. He was going to run the ball inside, saw the defense tight, auto the audible to Cleveland Gary to let him pop it outside. And again, he has the speed to break outside, then runs right through Deion Sanders for the touchdown. 10 nothing. We'll be right back. season number one by cutting a rap video. Jimmy Johnson showed this to the Hurricanes two nights ago. Have you seen? Yes, I have seen the rap video. Your impression? Uh, they're not very good singers. This afternoon, Hawkins and the Miami team went to see Die Hard. That was the movie that set it up. Said Coach Bowden, if we lose, we'll have to eat that rap video. He's not happy about it. Here's the kickoff. It goes out of bounds. A five-yard penalty against Miami. Now that touchdown. Terrific block by the right right offensive guard, Bobby Garcia. Watch him pull out and block out here. It clears the way for Cleveland Gary. Everybody, they're so disciplined on this Miami team. Everybody picked up the audible. He leads on Stan Shiver there at the strong safety. And then Gary does the rest as he runs through the tackle of Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders is the All-American cornerback who wears a Mr. T starter set around his <laughs> neck up there at campus. He has a big gold necklace that says prime time, and that tackle was not worthy of his effort. He's one of the finest you'll ever see in college football. Ben is set to kick it off again, this time from the 30-yard line with the Hurricanes leading the Seminoles 10 to nothing. Bangs it into the end zone, and Keith Ross will bring it out. Short of that 20-yard line as Miami swarms all over him. Doyle Aaron, and a reminder that tomorrow, 12.30 Eastern time. The NFL today returns at a full lineup. The feature game, San Francisco against New Orleans, the key divisional matchup. Minnesota will be playing Buffalo. Dallas takes on Pittsburgh. Rams, Green Bay. Atlanta, Detroit. Philadelphia, Tampa Bay. And Phoenix against Cincinnati. The coverage starts at 12.30 Eastern time. Come meet an old friend with us. Dick Buckus makes his debut on the NFL today. We welcome Dick to the show and look forward to tomorrow. Nebraska hammers Utah State. They've got a chance to jump all the way to number one if Florida State should stumble here. And that time it was Maurice Plum, number 49, leading the defense for the Canes. This is a very important drive, I think, for Florida State here. Uh, Miami really has a hot hand. The last thing they want to do is give the ball back to Steve Walsh in that offense. I think it's important to grind out a couple of first downs at least and to get Chip Ferguson's confidence back. Maybe a couple of quick outs, a screen pass perhaps, to get them back in the ball game. Two teams hoping also that the Hurricanes get the job done. Clemson and West Virginia. If it becomes a free-for-all, they are two teams with a shot at that championship. A long way to go here tonight. On second down, Bernard Clark, 57, making the stop. That was the fullback, Edgar Bennett, who was the ball carrier for the Seminoles. So the key question for the Seminoles, the quarterback, Chip Ferguson. And now he faces a, what, a third and about seven. This is, a, as I said, a big down for him. He's going to have to throw something downfield enough, obviously, to get himself seven yards in the first down. A big play here early in the game for Chip Ferguson. 15 minutes to go in the first half. Miami leading Florida State 10 to nothing. Sammy Smith, no daylight. They spring him out to the sideline. Randy Shannon pushed him out of bounds. A 
year ago, Florida State had great success in running Sammy Smith on third and long. Miami was very aware of that. Everybody stayed right at home. They didn't fool the Miami defense there. Tim Corlew, the walk-on punter. Miami lines up 10 men. He is standing on his own six-yard line. He gets it off under pressure. Spencer at the 35. And a great tackle there, but a penalty flag is down. A 44-yard punt by the walk-on. Minus one on the return. Boy, that's a big punt in that situation, I tell you. The officials conferring down in the middle here this evening. The referee is Buddy Ward tonight. And they're all members of the Southern Independent Collegiate Officials Association. You know, Brent, we've talked so much about Miami's offense already, and I think one of the things, the reasons they've been so successful over the past few years is their offensive line. And by their second team. Penalty against the Seminoles. They don't seem too certain about what to do here. Yeah, they get their first game jitters as well. But I was talking about Miami's offensive line. Illegal use to hands on a kicking team. 10-yard penalty. First down. So it will be a first and 10 for Miami on their own 44. Pat, you started to say something on the official interrupted. And I think what they do, Brett, is they take very close line splits. There was only 10 sacks a year ago of Steve Walsh because they take real tight line splits. It's very tough to get around them or inside of them to make, put any pressure on the quarterback, and that's why Walsh has had so much success. I think it's the other way around. We were interrupting him, right? <laughs> first and 10 for Walsh and the Canes. They lead the Seminoles by 10 points. Running out of that draw package now, and they've come with the backup fullback, Shannon Kroll, 5'11", 194 pounds, has replaced Cleveland Garrett. So here in Miami, it is 10 o'clock Eastern time on a gorgeous night in an arena that has hosted one big football game after another. And this year on September 3rd, it's the preseason number one, Florida State trailing the defending national champion Miami Hurricanes 10-0. The Hurricanes look as though they just picked up from the night when they buried Oklahoma down here, 20 to 14. Kroll bursting ahead for the first down before Shiver brings him down. Canes now come with backup players here in the humidity in the Orange Bowl, giving their starting backfield a rest. Okay, Kroll is one of those guys who came into camp. The coaches didn't know a whole lot about him, but he has really impressed them. Only a sophomore, a very strong runner, 194 pounds. They like him tackle to tackle, but tremendous legs and strength inside runner. Miami with 157 total yards already. Florida State with only 50. Another audible. The blitz gets it off and almost intercepted that time. Sanders coming over on Randall Hill. Again, the big cushion by the Florida State quarters, corners. Steve Walsh audible to the quick out. Sanders reads it beautifully this time and makes a nice drive on the ball. But I'll tell you what they're setting up right here, Brent, is a little out and up. But good coverage there by Tracy Sanders. Read Steve Walsh's throw. The ball was a little behind the receiver and really had a chance to make the interception. Randall Hill, the fastest man on the Miami team. He goes against Sanders and the rest of the secondary if they show that. Walsh, incomplete. Under pressure that time, and he threw the incompletion. Whoops. On the scoreboard here tonight, ours is 10 to nothing. Mississippi State wins its opener 21-14 over Louisiana Tech. Virginia over William & Mary 31-23. And Syracuse in the fourth quarter, leading Temple 24 to 6. Todd Philcox making his quarterbacking debut for the Orangemen in that game. Don McPherson has gone on to the NFL, and we wish him well. Third and 10. 
Walsh, under a blitz pressure, gets it off, incomplete. Kelvin Smith coming through on him before this sellout crowd in the Orange Bowl. What really made this successful was Kelvin Smith, Smith right in the middle, read the snap count, or got the snap count right on the button. He's right up, reads the blitz, gets right through there when the ball is snapped. Cleveland Gary tries to put a block on him, but rushes his throw. But notice that Steve Walsh didn't take the sack. Carlos Huerta on the field for what would be a 59-yard field goal attempt. Kirk Sandifer is the holder. It's fourth and ten. Let's see how strong Huerta's leg is. Not from there. So Florida State will get an opportunity to show something here on offense. They trail by 10. We've got a timeout, and we'll be right back. Won the last three meetings between these two schools. They came from behind, 19-3. And we asked Coach Bobby Bowden, why play the Hurricanes so easily or so early in the season? First place, with our preseason hype, we got to find out what we got. We might as well find it out early. We're going to find it out early. Uh, number two, that game was such a great game last year that had national significance. It'd be a shame to wait till the seventh game when maybe both of us got two losses or a loss. So here we are with Bobby and the Seminoles trailing Miami 10 to nothing. This is their best field position. They've started at the 16, the 15, and the 20. And from the 42, Chip Ferguson on first down, throwing complete to Dexter Carter out of the backfield. Dexter Carter, a tremendous receiver as a tailback, and the gain is 24 yards. Pat, there was an interesting decision a moment ago by Jimmy Johnson that we should not pass by. Why would he go for the field goal rather than punt the ball and drive the Seminoles back into a hole? Well, Jimmy Johnson is so concerned about getting a punt blocked. Florida State has done it the last three years in this game that he was afraid that he didn't want to have a punt block in that area of the field, so he gave his kicker a chance. That's great respect for the Florida State special teams. The gamble may have failed, however. Ferguson, by hitting that pass, has some of his confidence now restored. Inside the 35, under great pressure. He will not get it off in time. He's buried under a rush. Greg Mark amongst the defenders getting to Ferguson. Wow. Unbelievable pass rush there by the Miami front four. Again, most college teams don't see four down linemen early on, except in passing situations. But this, the, the four up front, they crowd the ball, and they really get off on time. That time, also from the inside, Bernard Clark, the middle linebacker, came. And Maurice Crum, number 49, delivered that initial blow on him. If there was any knock on Ferguson as a freshman and a sophomore, it's the fact that he didn't get rid of the ball under intense pressure. That time, however, he didn't have a chance to throw it up. They were all over it. He comes back, winging it again, complete to Lewis. And three defenders hammer him at the 36-yard line. Bernard Clark was there again. Very nice pass protection here by the Seminoles. Look at the right side of the line in particular. Gave Ferguson a lot more time this time to set up in the pocket. And when he's got some time, he's a pretty accurate quarterback. There was a nice little pocket for him, and he found Ronald Lewis on the outside. John Dockery and Pat Hayden, I'm Brent Musburger. We're inside of 10 minutes. First half of the Orange Bowl. Hope you're enjoying this one between the Seminoles of Florida State and the Hurricanes of Miami. It is 10 to nothing, Miami with the lead. We've got a timeout, and we'll bring you right back to the Orange Bowl in just a moment. State, and at the conclusion of tonight's CBS Sports College football game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to both schools. It will be third and 12. One other story of more than passing interest in the state of Florida. About an hour or so, they're going to have a lottery up there in Tallahassee. And, folks, it's the largest of all time in the United States. $52 million they're going to give away. We'll put the numbers on the screen for you before the night's over. There's a penalty marker down, I think, before the snap. Well, Ferguson did a real nice job of going on a long snap count. Looks like he drew the Miami defense offside. What are you going to do with the $52 million? I saw you punching up tickets there. Right well, there. defense. I'm sure my wife's going to ask for at least half of it right away. Believe me. <laughs> yeah, 
they'll wow. be very, very happy to give it to her, believe me. The cheerleaders <laughs> here from Miami are going to come out wearing the six lucky numbers late in the second half. There were folks from Alabama and Georgia and the Carolinas driving into northern Florida earlier this week buying the one dollar lottery tickets. Largest in the history of the country surpasses one. I guess it was 51.7 out in uh, California. I remember when the state of New York had one over 40 million. How about you? Will your uh, alma mater, Northwestern, get a couple of bucks? You win that thing? Big time scholarship. <laughs> Third down, six yards to go. Ferguson to put it up. Under pressure, throws incomplete. Bernard Clark had applied pressure on the quarterback. Ron Lewis, the intended receiver. Now, Ron Lewis is claiming he was interfered with, but the rule in college football is the ball has to be catchable. The official right there didn't believe that it was, so he didn't call the interference. Richie Andrews on to the field for the Seminoles. With fourth down and six from the 30-yard line, he will attempt a 47-yard field goal. He was hitting this easily with the breeze at his back in the pregame warm-up. Very strong left leg. Let's see how he does against that slight win. Well, he didn't get a hold of that one well at all. And the Seminoles are still being shut out. 9.27 to go in the first half. It is so difficult to swim upstream against Jimmy Johnson's defense. Oklahoma found it difficult through the years. They begin to turn the blitzers loose. And it's 10 to nothing. Hurricanes leading here. Walsh brings Miami up to the 30-yard line. First down. Shannon Kroll in the backfield with Leonard Conley. That draw package again. Conley jammed up in the middle and he could not get free. It's Anthony Moss, 99. You know, Brent, I've been watching uh, John O'Neill, number 75, the right tackle for Miami. He's played very well tonight. He was a left tackle a year ago, offensive tackle for the Hurricanes on offense, but had two shoulder surgeries on the left side, so they moved him over to the right side to play right tackle because all the pressure where you really, your shoulder gets so much abuse is on the outside shoulder. They thought by moving him to right tackle, he wouldn't take so much abuse on that left shoulder. Really played well tonight. And they've locked for so many great running backs down here at Miami. Alonzo Highsmith was here. Mel Bratton is Walsh. Throws complete to Shannon Cole out of the backfield. And speaking of some of those stars of the past, let's go downstairs to John Dockery. John. Brent, you just mentioned his name. I'm here with Mel Bratton, and Mel was nine months ago right here on this turf. Had you hurt the knee? How's it coming along? Well, my progress as far as my um, knee going very well. I'm looking towards uh, October, November as far as Going full speed, making the cuts, and be back to the old Mel Bratton I used to be. You drafted number six by the Dolphins. What's happening there? Well, I'll tell you, uh, right now, when they get back to Chicago, which is where they are now, uh, we're going to sit down and go, in and go to the table for the negotiations. What have you told Cleveland Gary? He's having one heck of a night out here. Well, it's all about making money, I guess you say it like that. And uh, he sees he has an eye to tiger this year as far as going out and doing the things he's capable of doing. We're sorry you lost him by getting injured last nine months ago. We wish you all the best of luck. Now back to you, Brent. Thanks. Uh, thanks, John. Boy, we wish Mel well. Wasn't that a sad sight that night? The game had already been won by the Hurricanes when he blew that knee out. He would have been a high first-round draft choice. Terrific all-around running back. Hope he can come back. Walsh almost intercepted that time. Sanders stepped in. Pigs, uh, the backup tight end, and Walsh is complaining that his man was interfered with. Well, that's twice, I think, that Steve Walsh is actually upset, I think, Brent, with his receiver, Mike Pigs, at that time. I think he called an audible, and Pigs really ran the wrong route, and Deion Sanders read it beautifully. You're going to see Walsh back out. When he sees there's a blitz, he doesn't even bother with a fake, Pites tries to put some steam on it. And Deion Sanders, number two, really almost has a chance for a big-time interception and a touchdown. And Derek Dodge contributed, too, jumping in front of him in that sequence. Second and ten for Walsh and the Hurricanes. Straight back, throws incomplete. Conley well covered on the play. Kelvin Smith had dropped out into the passing lane, and he had smothered it. Eight minutes to go and a third down for Walsh. He seems to be even a more aggressive, fiery leader here tonight than he was a year ago. Well, I think he realizes he has to pick up the leadership slack. Last year, he was the new kid on the block. He was surrounded by veterans on the offensive team. But this year, all the youth surrounds him. He's the leader. As 
hasn't made a big mistake here tonight either. Now movement in the line and penalty markers come down. 8.09 to go in the Orange Bowl. Miami 10, Florida State nothing. The Hurricanes kicked a field goal on their first possession. Well, this is just what the Florida State defense needed to do was finally slow down a very efficient Miami offense, and they have put them in an uncomfortable position for the first time tonight. I am not a member of that offensive line conferring. Walsh has been slowed up, as you said, Pat. He's only one of six for 12 yards here in the second quarter so far. Five-yard penalty marched off against the Hurricanes, puts the ball back on their own 35-yard line. They must get to the Seminoles, 49. Third down. Slot formation left. Good time. Throwing deep and incomplete. Leonard Conley was the closest receiver, but you get the feeling watching that pattern that someone did not go where they were supposed to. It's about the third or fourth time Miami has had some mix-up in their passing game, but now here is the situation that Jimmy Johnson was so concerned about, Florida State blocking a punt. They have blocked a Miami punt in four of the last five years. They blocked one a year ago for a touchdown. Tim Kalal, his first punt, Ten men up on the line. Deion Sanders set back. They come after him. They don't get him a low punt. And here is Sanders at the 28-yard line. Gets to the 36-yard line. An eight-yard return after the 37-yard punt. Well, now it's time to take a look here at the University of Miami and Coral Gables. Pride, dedication, and love explain Miami's success. Quality education and research depend on that kind of motivation from faculty, students, and alumni. It is a challenge going here, and it should be. The most important thing this university has to offer is the total experience of living, studying, and working in South Florida. The University of Miami, one of the finest private universities in the United States. Tight. Let's go. College football is individual determination. Team preparation. Ah, leverage, leverage, leverage. Injury prevention. Mental toughness. Not to think about being a good football team. Serious study. Hard. Then it's time for fun. Let's go like a bunch of crazy men and play some games. Enjoy college football, an American tradition. CFA College Football coming your way from the Orange Bowl in Miami tonight. Miami leading Florida State 10 to nothing. Another prime timer for you next Saturday night. South Bend, Indiana. Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame will take on Bo Schembechler's Michigan Wolverines at 9 Eastern time. Here it's the Seminoles with a first and 10. Ferguson. Complete. Fumble. Miami's ball. A turnover as Bernard Clark jars the ball loose. You really can't blame Terry Anthony. He knows his team is down. He is trying to get everything he can out of a short pass. It was a nice little call. When your quarterback is struggling a little bit and you're worried about a rush, throw some delays underneath. That's just what they do here to Terry Anthony. He turns up field as he's trying to get an extra yards. The ball is knocked loose. And Maurice Crum is there along with a couple of his teammates to make the play. Bubba McDowell recovers that fumble. There is the veteran who must step into some huge shoes in that defensive backfield. He replaces Benny Blades at free safety. Blades recovered a fumble in the fourth quarter against the Seminoles, which set up a touchdown a year ago. Remember Bubba McDowell knocked down the two-point play. First and ten for Walsh. Down the middle, Chatsinski the tight end to the 30-yard line for a first down for the Canes. Sometimes they don't look too pretty, but they get there. And Steve Walsh aimed this one in there. Sometimes that happens when you're concerned about a young receiver. Watch the tight end, Rob Chudzinski, on the bottom of the screen here. He's going to break right down the middle. The ball is just going to be lobbed over the top to Chudzinski to make the play. 
but oftentimes a quarterback with a young receiver, when he's wide open, is afraid to drill the ball. He'll just try to lob it in, and that's what Steve Walsh did. A year ago, he threw those touchdown passes of 49, 26, and 73 yards. Here he's leading the Canes again on a charge. Conley bangs ahead before Haggins, the nose man, able to bring him down. Brent Chajinski, who just caught the pass to tight end. He started last year as the fifth team tight end, but kind of worked his way up. And by the time the Orange Bowl came around last year, he actually got a chance to play quite a bit and played very well in the Orange Bowl. Canes are inside the Florida State 25 yard line. Time left in the first half. They lead it by 10. Conley behind Cleveland Gary turns it upfield. Very few teams can run power football and throw the ball effectively. Miami is one of those teams. When they need to hammer four yards out of the running game, they can, just as they did there with Conley off the right side. Holy Cross in the big opening. They win. Wake Forest over Villanova, 31 to 11. Navy wins its first game over James Madison, 27-14. Here's Steve Walsh and the Hurricanes lead Florida State by 10, threatening again, but on that play, no daylight. Steve Gabbard, number 76, stepped into that hole. Very important series here of the Florida State defense to come up with a big play, either a sack or make Steve Walsh kind of hurry his play. Look at the right side of the screen here of the defense. Gabbard, number 76, fights off a block is there to make the play. That's what it's going to take. Get your hands on the offensive man in front of you, get rid of him, and get to the ball. Second down and 11. Ball is at the Seminole 20-yard line. Must get inside the 10 for a first down. Walsh, as time, throws high, incomplete. His intended receiver, Conley, was well covered that time by Kevin Grant, number 47. Howard Schnellenberger won a national championship here at Miami, but he's not having much success at Louisville, losing to Maryland in a game in which he was ahead earlier. Now it's 24 to 10. So one of the reasons I think Steve Walsh has not completed his last few passes has been a much better pass rush by the Florida State defense, putting some heat on Walsh. Third and 11. Incomplete. Steve Shiver with good coverage that time, and Conley could not break free. Well, that's terrific coverage there by Shiver. Toughest uh, thing he can do, cover it back out of the backfield one-on-one. Let's straighten out that kind of confusing Chiron we had a moment ago, Pat. 7 nothing UCLA over San Diego State in the first quarter, and uh, the Bruins with a chance to move way up, and they've got a Heisman Trophy favorite in their quarterback. Troy Aikman, he had a sensational year uh, a year ago. He had an interesting controversy in Los Angeles. Who's the best quarterback? Rodney Pete at USC is off to a fine start. Troy Aikman is a great player. 37-yard attempt by Huerta, his third of the game. He's one for two and misses this one. Left this one outside. He made a 39-yard field goal on his first effort. Now he has missed field goals from the 59 and the 37-yard line. This game is exactly opposite of the way the one unfolded a year ago up in Tallahassee. So many of the former stars for Jimmy Johnson will be wearing professional uniforms tomorrow. Benny Blades up in Detroit. Michael Irvin with the Cowboys. Brian Blades will be out in Seattle. Daniel Stubbs in San Francisco. Warren Williams with Pittsburgh. Now Dexter Carter and Edgar Bennett. And Carter, a superb receiver off the draw, is wrestled down by Maryland, number 67. Maryland is 6'2", 272 pounds. This defensive front really crowds the football, and as soon as that ball gets off, boom, he is off. Watch how these guys, all these guys, get off the ball as soon as it's snapped. Great penetration there, and there's nowhere to go. This is a tough call, a uh, draw, against a penetrating defense like that. 
Yeah, a year ago it was Florida State missing field goals but still taking a lead. And here tonight, the Hurricanes with the lead. And they've missed a couple of field goals. Second and 15 for Ferguson and the Seminoles. Ball just inside the 15-yard line. Drops the screen off. And the Hurricanes were ready. Reggie Johnson swarmed under a host of tacklers led by Mark. A struggling Florida State offense. If somebody has to step to the forefront and really make a big play on this Florida State offense, and ordinarily that's going to have to be the quarterback, Chip Ferguson. They've been trying to dink the ball because they're concerned about the rush, but they're going to have to get a pass downfield. Preseason number one becomes a target for everyone. So hard to be rated number one before the campaign even begins and then live up to those high expectations. The Seminoles have not so far in the first half. Under pressure, he gets it off into the hands of Sammy Smith, but no daylight. Four Hurricane defenders were there, including number 49, linebacker Maurice Crum. Well, Maurice Crum has played very well this evening. Again, third and forever for the Florida State offense. A great situation for a defensive force. You can lay back and just rally to the football. Five orange jerseys around the screen pass. A chance to come after the walk-on punter. If Miami wants revenge and blocking a punt, this is an ideal spot. They send 10, but he gets it off, hangs it high. A good punt under pressure. And a fair catch there at the 45-yard line by Daryl Spencer. So under pressure, a 29-yarder, three minutes to go. The Hurricanes with field position and a chance to score again. Only seven teams have gone wire to wire in the Associated Press preseason ranking. The last one would have been Alabama in 1978. They got the job done. I should say Oklahoma. Let's not forget Boy. that Barry did it in 85, and he would have done it for three straight years, except for the Hurricanes of Miami. Conley swinging wide to the left. And Felton Hayes, six foot, 240 pounds, brings him down. And also Stan Shiver, the strong safety number 37, right there on Emilio's screen. What a terrific play he made. He came running up, forced the play, was really blocked, but got up and got a piece of the ball carry. I guess I was thinking about Alabama being the last team to win back, back to back. back, 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 back oh, Barry's won a few of them down there at yeah, Oklahoma. Sure has, hasn't he? Another good team down there. Good to see Jamel Holloway back. Jim Nance will have all the scores and highlights, and the coach, Eric Parsegan, will be along. I'm sure he's as surprised as everyone else about the sluggish Florida State offense so far. Walsh drops off the screen. Stan Shiver comes up and brings Gary down. This has been a whole different attitude in the second quarter by this Florida State defense. There's Shiver again. I've been very impressed with this guy last year as well. A, not great speed, but terribly physical player. Will make a lot of tackles for us. The defense keeping the Seminoles in the game. They could be behind by 24 points here if they didn't hold ground against Walsh and the Hurricanes because the Hurricanes have had excellent field position and have not accomplished much here in the second quarter. Looks like the Canes are going to call... Uh, I see some of the coaches asking for a timeout. I don't think Walsh sees him. Now he sees it. Either that or he was coming up to take a look at the defensive front, see who was in the game. 140 to go in the first half. Timeout for Miami. They lead it by 10. And we'll be right back. A week one of the NFL season on this Labor Day holiday. You get to see all your favorite teams in action San Francisco and New Orleans that should be a key confrontation in the NFC West Minnesota's up at Buffalo Jim Kelly will be quarterbacking the Bills the former Miami star Dallas taking on Pittsburgh we we'll start our coverage at 1230 Eastern time with the NFL today and there are the Seminoles from a year ago nice to see the quarterback Danny McManus made the Kansas City Chiefs with one of their backup quarterbacks <laughs> Jumping around out there, and the penalty flags come down on this third down sequence. Uh, that can drive a defensive lineman nuts. When the quarterback gets under and, and just barks very loudly on a quick count, a lot of times defensive linemen will jump very quickly and be offside. Offside on a defense. Offside 
So now it becomes a much more manageable down. Instead of third and nine, you have third and five. And it's calling it a long three. So the Canes come at you mentally as well as physically. Oh, yes, particularly with Steve Walsh. Hot, humid night here in Miami, believe me. Probably much hotter and much more humid for the Seminoles than for the Hurricanes right now, the way things have gone here in the first half. 139 to go. But this is a game that has revolved around the fourth quarter for the last few years. Oh, Conley breaks free, coming back the other way. Broke the clothesline. Freeman had it. Unbelievable strength. We talk about Conley being a small man, but a strong runner. Terrific blitz here. Watch, you're going to see four or five white jerseys right in the backfield. They timed the blitz perfectly. Cleveland Gary couldn't get out there and make the block on Freeman number 10, but Conley shows you the strength. Can't get him high, got to get him down low, but didn't pick up the first down. Tim Kalal comes in to punt, and Florida State uses a timeout right now. 1.15 to go here in the first half, and Florida State, a team which blocked four punts a year ago, wants to take a shot and why don't we take a look at Florida State University up in Tallahassee. How would you compare an education at Florida State to an Ivy League education? It would compare very favorably. The only difference that I would see would be possibly the contacts that one might make at an Ivy League school. I don't know what I want to do in life. Should I still enroll in college? I think it's uh, something for you to consider. Most people, uh, when they go to college, or at least many of them, uh, have no idea what uh, they really want to do when they get out. So I think uh, it's probably a pretty good place to find out what you want to do. Tough spot here for Miami, and back-to-back -back timeouts are called. Tim Kalau called the timeout, and he will bring the punting team off the field over to the side. With fourth and three, the ball at the Seminoles, 38-yard line. They have decided to send the offense back in here with 1.15 to go. That was Miami's last timeout. Florida State has won. And this shows you the kind of confidence that Jimmy Johnson has in Steve Walsh in these kind of situations. Or how about the fear of Bobby Bowden's punt defensive unit? You're absolutely right. And Jimmy Johnson was concerned about that all week. But if you're the Florida State defense, I think here, Brent, Cleveland Gary has been the big receiver for Steve Walsh out of the backfield. And this is the kind of situation where ordinarily you only need three or four yards. You dump the ball off to a back. I think you need to double cover Gary. And Pat... You can assume that the defensive staff of Miami, not afraid to let Chip Ferguson and the Seminole offense have the ball at the 35 with about a minute to go and one timeout, because so far, Ferguson has not shown that he has enough time to go deep against him. They've applied good pressure on him. Exactly right. If, they, if FSU gets the ball and they can keep it back in and give Ferguson some time, they have a chance to put something on the board before halftime. That graphic showed Miami with one timeout. The scoreboard shows them with none. We'll double check that. Here's the fourth down. Walsh will put it up. There's the first down. They get the first down on the completion by Dale Dawkins. Terrific call here by Miami. It shows great confidence in this team. They'll throw the ball. This is part of their offense as they hurry up to the line of scrimmage now to try to get another play in. But Dawkins knew where the first down sticks were, picked up the first down. Pat, confirm we just did. They have no timeouts remaining. They must hurry. That is short of a first down, that completion by the tight end, Chudzinski. Plenty of time here for Steve Walsh. Really doesn't have to rush it an awful lot. Now the Seminoles call a timeout. Real second down in Miami out of timeouts unless they weren't sure about who to have on the field. Very unusual to give Miami an opportunity to set up a sideline play, kick a field goal, and work with a 43 seconds. Florida State wanted to get their nickel defense in, and that's why they called the timeout. But on the other hand, of course, it does give Steve Walsh that time, time to come over and talk things over, out with his, uh, with his coaches on the sideline. Second and short, 
Jimmy Johnson and Walsh can consider going long. And while we've got a time stoppage, let's go down to John Dockery. John? You know, Brent, you mentioned it. The place is sold out. It's been that way for weeks now. And up in Florida State, they only got 16,000 tickets. So some enterprising fans actually called down here to Miami and bought season tickets for $105. <laughs> a whole season ticket issue just to get this one valuable ducat. Creative, but expensive, and not enjoying tonight, Brent. Now back to you. I thought John was going to show us lottery tickets. <laughs> yeah, when he was whipping out those ducats down there. Somebody's going to have to win the lottery to be able to pay for those tickets. <laughs> well, interesting final minute here of the first half. 10-0, Miami over Florida State. What about possible strategy here? Well, Miami has no timeouts remaining, but 43 seconds is an awful lot of time, particularly when you have this kind of offense. What they've used so far here late in the second quarter is the tight end Chazinski an awful lot. I expect to see them go to him again. Second and two. Do you take the free shot at the long one? You got to run for the first down to move the chains and stop the clock. They'll run it, and it's Gary. He will not break the tackle. That was Leroy Butler, number six, coming up defensively for the Seminoles, and they've had some big tackles in this quarter. Time running. Canes without a timeout. Down toward 20 seconds. Where to their field goal specialist. One of three. On the draw, Cleveland Gary. Pounding inside the 20 before he steps out of bounds. Well, that call takes some guts there in that kind of situation. Third and four, but they pick up the first down. An unusual call, the draw play to the man of the night, really, Cleveland Gary, and he did a nice job of not only picking up the first down, but then getting himself out of bounds. Miami is proving something tonight about all the preseason polls. You are the champion until someone knocks your crown off. A lot of folks think that when you start the season, Last year's champion should be number one, and then you rank everybody else below. So now you're agreeing with me, huh? <laughs> Without a doubt. No timeouts and working against the clock. Down over the middle. Touchdown, Miami. Rob Chutzinski, who's had a marvelous first half. Number 84, a 6'4", 220-pound sophomore out of Toledo, Ohio, has caught five passes for 61 yards and a touchdown here tonight in the Orange Bowl. What a debut. Huerta hammers the extra point. The defending champions lead preseason number one. 17 to nothing. One thing about good offensive teams, when they have something going, they're going to go back to it until you stop it. Steve Walsh looks to his left, sees the middle wide open as they try to double cover outside. Chazinski splits the difference and takes it in for the score. That's incredible. Eight plays, 45 yards, and Bobby Bowden's coaching staff will discuss, I'm sure, during the week at some point about calling a timeout and giving the offense time there when they had no timeouts, even though you were not with your nickel package on the field. You want to keep that clock running, you would think, in that situation. Chizinski is one of the fun stories in college football, I think, as I said earlier. Fifth tight end a year ago. Didn't get a chance to play much. I think he was in five plays all season long. But really had a big evening tonight. Miami uses the tight end and fullback in great combination routes. to do this year. You better be loaded to come after this one. Venice keeping the clock moving and keeping the ball out of the hands of one of the deep threats. As the final seconds tick away, the clock is stopped here at five seconds. So the Seminoles with an opportunity to hoist at least one long here in the waning moments of the first half. They're down by 17 points. 
Brent, even though the defense has given up 17 points, I think they've played very well, but they've just been on the field much too long here in the first half. The offense is going to have to find a way at halftime to grind out some first downs and keep Steve Walsh and company on the bench. going right for the Seminoles. And with five seconds to go and the possibility of a Hail Mary and send everybody deep, the center fielder for the Hurricanes will probably be back there about 40 yards. Well, they're going to have about five center field fielders, it looks like. Bubba McDowell. Just wow. Keep on moving. <laughs> Percentages are not good. You think the Seminoles might be punted. Down. A penalty marker is down at the 20-yard line. There is a penalty marker down. Hold everything as the players start to go to the locker room. They have a penalty flag down. The half can't end on a penalty unless it was against Florida State. Miami declines. Side on the defense. So they can line up and uh, take one final whack at him. Disappointing half for Sammy Smith and the Seminoles. Defense. But this game again has revolved around the fourth quarter the last two years. And the Hurricanes uh, have done most of the taking. They have won the last three coming from behind. And here tonight, it'll be the Seminoles who have come from the rear. Well, remember the, the last two games that Florida State played last year, including the Fiesta Bowl, they came from behind to win. Take a 17 to nothing lead into the locker room. For Jimmy Johnson and the Hurricanes in the closing moments of the first half, Steve Walsh lit up the scoreboard by going to his tight end, Rob Chudzinski, for the touchdown. 19 yards for the score, and at the half, it's 17 to nothing. Jim Nance will be back with a college football report after this message and a word from your local station. You know, once again this year, we will be announcing the Toyota Leadership Award winners during our college football telecast. And earlier this week, I spoke with George Borst, Toyota's corporate marketing manager, and I asked George, why a leadership award? Brent, it's the all-around individual that we feel deserves special recognition. And that's why Toyota came up with a leadership award, to recognize those players that have established themselves as leaders both on and off the field. In fact, many past award winners have continued on with outstanding achievements after graduation. George, any special success stories? Sure. Mike Lanise, a 1985 Ohio State graduate, became a Rhodes Scholar. Greg Bolin, a UCLA graduate, who won in 1986, is currently in the Peace Corps. And Ken Higgins, a University of Michigan grad, is now attending Harvard Law School. George, who selects our weekly winners? Well, Brent, each week, the faculty and coaching staff of the teams competing on CBS will pick one player from each team who really demonstrates what leadership is all about. Hard work on the playing field, in the classroom, and in the community. Toyota then donates a check for $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. And George Toyota caps it off with something very special at the end of the season. That's right, Brent. That's when we present the Toyota Leader of the Year Award to one of these exceptional athletes, as well as a check for $10,000 to that school's general scholarship fund. George, it's a pleasure to be a part of the Toyota Leadership Award for the fourth year, and we will be awarding tonight's in the second half. Thank you, Brent. And we'll be back after this word from your local station. Sponsored by Burger King, where we do it like you do it. UPS, for overnight delivery from coast to coast, UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. And by Toyota, there's quality. Who could ask for anything more? Back at the Orange Bowl, ready for the second half. 17-0, 
many celebrities on hand tonight. Burt Reynolds and his wife Lonnie Anderson, but none bigger than that gentleman right there, the Yankee Clipper, the great Joe DiMaggio, watching tonight's game in the Orange Bowl. Joe, I know you underwent some surgery a little bit earlier this year. Nice to see you here at the ballpark, and hope you're feeling well tonight, big fella. Now, Bobby Bowden is having some problems, and John Dockery got a hold of the Florida State coach right after the intermission, and they had this conversation. Bowden came out of the locker room. Bobby, any changes for the second half? We just got to we got to start winning up front. If we don't start winning up front, we're not going to do anything. You wouldn't change a quarterback, would you? Not right now because we don't think it's his fault. He's getting no protection. They're getting him with their blitzes, and, uh, and that, we got to solve that first, not blame it on the quarterback. One last question, Bobby. Why the timeout going in to the half? As time was running out, going into half. When, when they had the ball, we had, we had we had substitution problems. Didn't have the right set we wanted to be in. Thanks, Bob. Good luck. And as we start this second half with Jimmy Johnson in command, 17 to nothing. I guess that we should point out that in Florida State's last two games of 87, both times they came from behind in the Fiesta Bowl. They were down early to Nebraska, 14 to nothing, and won that, 31-28. Before that, against. Gators of Florida, they trailed 14-3 and won 28 to 14. But here they've really got their work cut out. I think Bobby made a very good point about this man, Chip Ferguson. He has not really had much time to throw the ball, but he still completed seven out of ten passes. Here's the example. Watch the right side of the defense as they come rushing in. It's really just a short little drop here as he hands the ball off to his uh, back on the draw, and there's just too much penetration up front by that four-man front of Miami. So Ben is set to kick it off for the Hurricanes as the defending national champions have dominated preseason number one Florida State. It's 17 to nothing with Carter and Ross set to return for the Seminoles. Looking for a spark here in the early moments of the second half. Carter. 20. Gets to the 29-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Chip Ferguson and the Seminoles. Looking for some of that blazing speed to get going. One of the finest relay teams in all of college athletics. Dexter Carter, Sammy Smith, Deion Sanders are there. The fourth fellow, Arthur Blake, he won't be in a football uniform tonight, but you can see him in the Olympics over in Korea, where he's a member of our United States Olympic team as a hurdler. But speed has not gotten it done for Florida State, at least so far. First and 10. And confusion in the backfield. Smith and Ferguson. And the quarterback pounces on it. Right when you need to get something going, that's not what you want to have happen. Oftentimes you see that when you have a new center. You know, Kuyper's number 62 is playing center, and he was a guard a year ago. But that ball came up pretty well, but Ferguson never had the full handle on it. And then really did the smart thing, just fell on it and avoided the actual turnover. Second down for the Seminoles as the ball on their own 26, 15 yards to go for the first down. Sammy Smith trying to twist three. You know, one of the big differences this year from last year, Sammy Smith ran for almost 190 yards. The first half, he only had eight yards. Great push by the four-man front. That's a good look at it. Watch how they control it. There's no holes there, no seam for Sammy Smith to put his big body through. That's terrific penetration. They're going to have to get the ball outside or really, I think, start throwing the ball with some effectiveness to be able to win this ball game. Anthony goes wide to the left. Lewis is wide to the right. O'Malley is the tight end. Williams the fullback in front of Smith on third and long. Ferguson goes deep down the middle for Lewis, who makes a diving effort, and he's got it there at the 40-yard line. A brilliant catch by the one-time baseball star of the Seminoles, 33-yard gain. Well, he played it just like a center fielder. The ball was thrown, and it was just lobbed here in the center of the field. Lewis saw the ball the entire way, made a beautiful adjustment to make the ball. A lot of receivers don't do this. The ball is thrown away from them. They don't make the adjustment. But Lewis does a terrific job of cutting in and catching the ball that was thrown in the middle of the field. It was third down that turned the game around for the Hurricanes up in Tallahassee. Now the Seminoles, and Ferguson slips, takes a rip, and the pass is intercepted. Donald Ellis 
pulls it down for Miami. Man, I've seen quarterbacks fall down a lot coming back from the center when they get their foot caught on an offensive guard as he tries to pull out. Let's see if that happens. You see the, the offensive guard step right on Chip Ferguson's foot. The right guard stepped right on his foot. He tried to get rid of the ball, avoid the sack, and there was the interception made. He got the one foot in, so that is an interception in college football. First and ten for the Canes. Hill and Dawkins are the wide receivers. Gary and Conley carry the ball carrier now to the 31-yard line. Any thoughts on Coach Johnson's strategy here in the second half with a 17-point lead? What are his options? Well, Miami is not the team to, type of team to go into, sh into, into a shell brand. What they're going to come out and do is run the same offense they have for the last five years. They're going to throw the ball. They're going to spread it around. And until you stop the tight end and the fullback, they're going to keep using them. High formation. Very in front of Conley. Fake to the fullback, to the near side, incomplete. Tracy Sanders was all over Hill, and the two bark at each other. Actually, it's Hill doing most of the barking as he goes back to the Miami huddle. Watch right here. We saw Chip Ferguson as he slipped. He's going to step right on Chip Ferguson's foot as he tries to back out. Now, remember, he's worried about protection, but his left foot steps right on Ferguson's foot. And I've seen that happen to quarterbacks. Happened to me a lot as a quarterback. When you're concerned about the rush, the offensive lineman sometimes gets his foot in the way. Dale Dawkins, number 11, goes way out to the right. Walsh again to the near side. What a Gary who had come downfield, turned and sort of stopped in his pattern as Walsh zipped it out of bounds. I think sometimes when Steve Walsh throws the ball high, as he has a couple times here in the second half, he doesn't really get through. He's throwing off his back foot and doesn't really follow through to get the ball down. But the young man does have remarkable presence about him. It's one of those intangibles for quarterbacks that you really can't measure. I think that raises the level of performance of your teammates maybe 10 or 15 percent when you have that aura of success. So with a delay of game, it's third and 13. Seminole show blitz and then back out. Walsh audibles. They come with the blitz. He gets time, and he'll throw the incompletion. Walsh does not make the critical mistake. He does not try to force the ball. Didn't want to give up the interception. Content to throw an incompletion. 17-point lead. Does not take the sack. Only 10 a year ago. But I think there's been some miscommunication on four or five occasions between Walsh and his receivers. Kalal standing on his own 12. 10 Seminoles poised at the line. Sanders the only man. They come after him, and he gets it off. No penalty flag down. What a booming punt. They drive Sanders inside the 15. Darkness for prime time. A great 60-yard punt by Tim Kalau with a seven-yard return. We'll be right back. The most valuable player last January 1st Orange Bowl. He said the key to this game was stopping Sammy Smith, and here's what they had to do against him. We definitely have to toughen up. One thing is we can't over-pursue. Like I said, Sammy Smith's great at cutback, and that's what he did a lot against us last year because guys were too aggressive and over-pursuing, and he's just finding lanes, and he just cut back and break them. 189 yards, that's a lot of yards. <laughs> Busted one for 65 yards before Bubba McDowell caught him from behind. Smith is in at tailback on his first down. Williams the fullback. Ferguson brings it around on the bootleg. Smashed down by Kenny Berry, number six. The situation in the American League. Milwaukee Brewers suddenly not out of it. 
and Boston with trouble out in Anaheim. And meanwhile, the Yankees were beaten by Oakland as the A's close in on the American League Western Division Championship. Here it is, Miami 17, Florida State nothing. 11.50 to go in the third quarter. This is second down and long for Ferguson and the Seminoles, who have been bottled up here tonight by this fierce Miami defense. They moved too quickly that time, and a penalty marker goes down. And what Florida State has not been able to do, they've got tremendous speed on the outside with receivers. Ball start on the offense, five yards. But they've not been able to get the ball to them, Brent, on the move. That's how you come up with big plays. A wide receiver comes over the middle, the ball, the quarterback hits him on the run, and he breaks a tackle when he's off to the races. They've not hit any receivers on the move tonight. So second and long becomes second and longer. Ferguson with Dossie set out to his left, and Anthony to the near side as the wide receivers. Sammy Smith is cut off and tries to bring it back. Great defense. Maurice Plum. That's the strong safety two of Miami. Body Harden. You're going to see all the guys close to the line of scrimmage making plays here again into the gaps. And again, there's just nowhere for Sammy Smith to run. Good penetration by Maurice Crum. He was a question mark coming into the game, but has played extremely well. And a rededicated defense against Sammy Smith has held him to one yard in eight carries following that setback. Third and 19, Dossie coming in motion. Ferguson drops off the screen to Smith, and he has hammered there at the 11 by Crum again. He's playing a whale of a game. six-yard line. A penalty marker is down at the 12-yard line. That was a 43-yard pump with a three-yard return, and the flag was thrown back down at the line of scrimmage. Really, for our first game, we haven't seen that many penalties. I think it's a little unusual. You know, Brent, offense is very much a game of rhythm, and Florida State's offense has just been out of sync, I think, all night tonight. No rhythm there. Is it because of their inability to execute or simply the defensive pressure applied by Miami? I think it's the defensive Holding pressure. on the defense. Previous spot foul. How many points a year did the Seminoles average last year? It was over 41 points. This is an explosive team. Really have been throughout the career of Bobby Bowden because they're an unusual team, as we saw, and they opened the game with two reverses. Hard to defend a team that does as many different things as they do, but really it's been up front. The defensive line of Miami has been the difference tonight. Jimmy Johnson getting an explanation from the official. Bowden over on the far side weighing his options in this situation. The referee is talking to Deion Sanders and Bowden comes down the sideline as there seems to be some confusion on both sidelines as to whether or not it's going to be a first down or is for Bowden. Johnson's Hurricanes here. 10-15 to go in the third. Miami leading Florida State. 17 to nothing. The Hunter has come right back on the field. So we talked about the defensive front two of Miami, the entire defense, and FSU on on offense and first down has just been miserable, only averaging two yards on first down, and that's why they're having to punt the ball an awful lot tonight. So the Bruins break out on top. Again to punt. Again in deep. They will 
attempt to punt all over again with Tim Corlew this time standing on his own six-yard line. He just did get that one off. Fair catch at the 49-yard line, just about the same spot where we were. 31-yard punt, 10.07 to go in the third. Timeout in the Orange Bowl. We'll be right back. 17 nothing Miami, and those are important numbers, but none are bigger than these uniform jerseys we're going to show you. Folks, if you've been thinking about these six athletes, Hill, Huerta, Spencer of Miami, Ross Ferguson, Wimberley of Florida State, you'd only be $52 million richer tonight at this oh, stage. My wife would love me a lot more, too, I know. <laughs> <laughs> number five, let's see, that's Ferguson's number, Joe DiMaggio. Probably a lot of sentimental folks from New York yeah. who moved down here. They probably punched that one out today. First and ten. For Walsh and the Hurricanes, they lead it 17 to nothing. Bring Conley, good tackle that time. Anthony Moss, whose brother played here at Miami. So Troy Aikman on a rampage. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Brent, he is red hot. Three touchdown passes in the first half. This one just a minute ago to Mark Eastwick. Bruins 28-0, four minutes left in the first half. Back to Brenton Peck. And Aikman takes an early lead in that Heisman race. Second down, 9-34. One of the challengers, Sammy Smith, having all kinds of trouble here tonight at the Orange Bowl. Wall straight back, throws one deep for Hill, who had it. Ball is loose. Dawkins dives on it. At the five-yard line, they'll give him a completion. Fumble, ball recovered by Dawkins. The official almost called incomplete. Deion Sanders knocked the ball loose, but another break for the Hurricanes. A big hit by number two. Deion Sanders right here knocks the ball loose. He comes from all the way on the other side of the field. Terrific concentration there by Hill. And then Deion knocks the ball loose. The question is whether he had really had possession there. The official said that he did, and Dawkins is there to make recovery. The coaches are going to be furious when they see the game film. He had his hands moved in the incomplete position and pulled them back. Everything going Miami's way. The power on. Walsh to throw on first down. Conley, touchdown, Hurricane.
absolutely right. Steve Walsh, the man right there, has used his head and his arm all night long to come up with a big play. Next Saturday night, we'll take you to South Bend, Indiana. Notre Dame's opener against Michigan. Well, Bo thinks he's got a pretty good ball club, very good in the lines, and Notre Dame probably has more speed than had in a while. Was that this year's line, or was that back <laughs> in the time when they didn't wear helmets? Yeah. Now Ferguson with Smith at the tailback. Off the fake. That time and almost threw an interception. In and out of Randy Shannon's hands. That would have been six more, and it is a very rattled Seminole team right now. I want to tell you, Chip Ferguson took a very big hit. No matter how he's played, you have to have some admiration for the guy because things haven't gone his way, but he's still hanging in there, knowing that he's going to get hit after he releases the ball. Got a lot of respect for Chip Ferguson. It would have been easy for him to quit a couple of years ago, but he's really hung in there. Ferguson brings the Seminoles up. fullback Williams he comes to the 16 yard line Bernard Clark and there is the backup quarterback Peter Tom Willis 6'3 207 pounds he dueled Ferguson during the spring and then early on in fall practice a year ago nine of ten and one touchdown and it seems very likely now with the way he's throwing and wearing the helmet that Peter Tom Willis will be in the game for the Seminoles before long but it's, I don't think it's really been Chip Ferguson. The offensive line just had to give him a chance. From the power eye, Ferguson throws complete for the first down to his running back, Sammy Smith. Bubba McDowell making the stop for the Hurricanes. 21-yard game. Well, that really surprises me. Another team that needs to find some offenses, that's AM. LSU with a pretty good quarterback himself, Tom Hudson. They haven't been the same since the Nebraska linebacker leveled Rod Harris. In the second right. half of the kickoff classic, turning that game around. And sputtered and again tonight against LSU. Smith cutting to the right side, showing that running ability for the first time here tonight with Robert Bailey making the hit. One of the issues coming into this game for Florida State was they had a lot of talent, but would they play as hard as they did a year ago? I think they tried to play hard tonight, but now they find themselves down by 24 points. You're going to find out what kind of heart they have this year. See how they hang in there. Thus far, I think Chip Ferguson in particular has really hung in there under some adverse circumstances. What the Seminoles need more than anything in the world is a big play, a big play of any kind. Smith again featured and wrapped up. Boy, those Canes are jumping back at him, not giving him any running room. Terrific penetration by number 44, Shane Curry. Watch as he gets through. He just slants inside. There's nobody there. Beats the tackle very quickly, and that slows up Sammy Smith enough for some of his teammates to bring him down. Third and five. Fullback Dexter Carter replaces Smith, excellent receiver. Lewis and Anthony are the wide men. O'Malley, the tight end for the center. Off a play fake. It'll be incomplete. Lewis was the deep receiver. Bailey, number 23, had the coverage for the game. Again, two guys draped all over Chip Ferguson. Just no way for him to complete the pass. Well, only one time tonight, Brandon, they brought Ferguson out of the pocket on a little waggle play. Tim Corlew punting again. In front of the CBS eye, the Miami Hurricanes have been absolutely invincible. The last game they lost on CBS was to Doug Flutie and Boston College here in the Orange Bowl. Takes a Miami bounce and rolls dead. At the 33-yard line, only a 23-yard punt. So when you come back, the Hurricanes with a 24-point lead will have the ball again. And 
quickly the snap you missed, and then the handoff was to Conley. So you picked up the player right there as we come back on first down. It will be second and 10 for Miami. 5.40 to go here in the third. 24 to nothing. Miami leading Florida State. Conley will be taken out of the game for a breather, and Shannon Kroll checks in as they split Kroll and Gary in the backfield. Walsh, as he has done all night, coming up to the line and barking out another audible. Complete to Kroll. Hammered at the 40-yard line by Keith Carter. So a Pac-10 opener in Arizona getting some resistance from Oregon State tonight. 17-13. Who has the power out in the West? UCLA yeah, UCLA and, uh, and Southern Cal. And Washington actually is going to be a pretty good football team as well, I think. Don James, after two years where his teams haven't played so well, he's he's back with a vengeance, I think. The big down here for the Florida State defense. They have to either force a sack, come up with a big play, perhaps an interception, and have any chance at all. Looks in the middle. And the whistle sounded before the play. Penalty markers are down all over. Well, too much time there on Miami. So Jimmy Johnson in control. You know, Jimmy Johnson was the head football coach at Oklahoma State. And when he went there, he inherited a kind of a roughhouse defensive end by the name of Dexter Manley. And when Johnson arrived, first thing he did was he took, well, he took away some of Dexter's extra meal money down there. And then then he took away his car and he made him ride the bicycle around campus and Dexter threatened to quit and Jimmy said well it's up to you big fella and uh, Dexter Manley uh, got the job done for him down there before he went on to his star status with the Washington Redskins and we hope his drug problem is cleared up for good stays clean this year and contributes to Washington Walsh drops back goes complete Dan Shiver delivering the blow on Cleveland Gary. When Cleveland Gary went up to Georgia, he was also a baseball player. Now, they did not let him play baseball down here at Miami for Coach Ron Frazier because the offensive system is so complex they needed him in the spring. How good are Cleveland Gary's hands? He ordered a 16 and a half size ring, the largest of any hand on the championship team of a year ago. Deion Sanders set deep. Maybe they can get something going with a punt return, but the coverage has been superb. They have protected the young punter. A low snap. He comes up with it. And this will be Sanders at the 22. Coming to the return left. But he is sealed up in the middle. Now he squirts free brilliantly. And then he's run down again. Hey, Deion Sanders has some legitimate speed. That was the first time tonight they set up the return for Deion Sanders, and you have to wonder if Bobby Bowles is going to try to do that more this year than he ordinarily would. Likes to block punts, but with Deion Sanders back there, you have to give him a chance. Harden with an excellent job on that punt coverage team. Number four, Peter Tom Willis in at quarterback. This will be his first snap of the game. He takes over with Miami, beating Florida State by 24 points. Three minutes in the third, and he fires a completion on first down. That could give him a lift. Peter Tom Willis is a little bit taller than Ferguson, has a stronger arm and a quicker delivery. They like Ferguson because of the experience that he had, but Peter Tom Willis, as you see last year, was awfully accurate. Reggie Johnson, number 80, was the receiver. Second and four. Bennett and Dexter Carter are his running backs. Throws again. Dropped by Lewis. A ball he should have caught. Donald Ellis with coverage for the game. Ronald Lewis really took his eye off the ball when he was looking at Donald Ellis, but he was trying to make something big out of a small play, was going to try to fake Ellis out and come up with a big play on a short pass. Long night for a good coach. Third down, and Florida State must get to its 40-yard line for a first down. 
Both wide receivers are out to the left of Willis. Lewis is in motion. They throw outside for the first down to Anthony. You see Donald Lewis there giving Anthony plenty of cushion. And Jimmy Johnson said Donald Lewis is one of the real keys to their defense this year. He plays their wide side corner. Him coming back from knee surgery, if he can play well, that defensive strong safety in the front four can really tee off on the quarterback. So he's a big man in this uh, Miami defense. Ball is at the 42 for Willis. Dossie, flank to the right. Willis under pressure. Turns around and throws incomplete. Jimmy Jones applied the pressure up front for the Hurricanes. And Willis just turned tail and got out of there and bought some breathing room. You know what Jimmy Jones does, as you look at him right there, he does great hands. And all these defensive linemen from Miami get their hands on the offensive linemen so quickly that the offensive linemen can't control them. And they actually throw them out of the way and they make the play. Very quick, strong hands by the defensive front. Second and ten. Dossie to the wide side. Carter comes out of the backfield. And he throws to the tailback at midfield. This will leave them third and about three yards for a first down. Dexter Carter in the offense for Florida State. They're a much more versatile team. He's been terrific out of the backfield all last season. A big-time receiver out of the backfield, Carter is, even though he's a small target. 31 to nothing Bruins over San Diego State. Arizona still ahead of Oregon State, 17 to 13 in the fourth. And how about that final? Western Michigan beats Wisconsin. Willis, Carter, and he could not get up high enough to make the catch. It'll be fourth down at midfield at this point with 107, Pat Hayden. What about Bowden's choice here? You have to go for it. I think this this point of the game this is the best field position they've had in about two quarters. I'd be very, very surprised to see Bowden punt. It looks like he's going to. This does surprise me. Possibly a fake. I don't think Miami would be fooled. Considering all the talk about block punts, and two youngsters in their first pressure pack game, they've both really held up. Florida booms this one. Florida State will stop it there at the 13 as it got a Miami bounce there in the final moment. So heroes today. Well, up at Gainesville, Emmett Smith with three touchdowns, and he has now rushed for 100 or more yards in nine straight games. Joe Henderson for Clemson. Two touchdowns in that game. Major Harris, West Virginia's fine quarterback with two scores. As West Virginia rolls up an impressive score. Well, I like that West Virginia team. I think they're a top 10 team. off to Conley. Freeman, the first to hit him. Now, the Florida State defense really has to start stripping the ball carriers now. They need a fumble down here in this area of the field. This is where they need the turnover to cash in on a quick uh, seven points. You know, uh, I can't help but think about all the comments down here in Florida that have been directed at the university for playing Montana State and uh, dropping Miami from the schedule. It really is, I think, too bad from a fan standpoint that the three great colleges down here don't play the round robin every year. I'm sure there were good, sound financial reasons. At least that's what Florida said. Here's Gary cutting back to the 24-yard line. But I think Florida should play Miami every year. Oh, absolutely. Time. When you have a kind of uh, the athletes that all three of these universities have, every one of them should be playing each other every year. It shouldn't yeah. be waiting until 1995 to be playing Florida. We've come to the end of the third quarter. Miami shutting out Florida State 24 to nothing. College football on CBS will return after this message and a word from your local station.
CBS Sports presents college football. Tonight's CFA game is sponsored by Michelin. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by the U.S. Army, where you get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Well, Miami has dominated in every category here tonight. The most important, they lead Florida State 24 to nothing. Think back to a year ago in October when we were up in Tallahassee on that bright, sunshiny Saturday afternoon. It was 19 to 3, and Steve Walsh was one series away from being taken out by Jimmy Johnson and replaced by young Craig Erickson. And then Walsh hit Mel Bratton for the first of three long scoring plays, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now leading 24 to nothing, Walsh fires complete over the middle, hitting Andre Brown. A 23-yard gain for the defending national champions. Wonderful touch here by Steve Walsh, and what really set this pass up, he looked to his left, gave himself a little bit of time, the free safety was out of the way, and then he drilled the ball over to the right to Andre Brown as he ran the post pattern. Set it up perfectly. On Wednesday night of each game week, Steve Walsh begins visualizing game situations. Closes his eyes as he prepares to go to sleep and thinks about positive imagery out in that secondary. Here it is Conley giving him some yardage before he puts the ball on the ground. Did they whistle it dead? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. It's about the third or fourth time that has happened to Conley tonight. That was one of those positive images that when Conley puts it down a second time, the whistle will have sounded. You know, Brad, a lot of athletes do that. I, I know tennis players do it, golfers do it, as you take another look here at Conley. Great cutback runner. And ordinarily, you don't see cutback runners on natural grass, which Miami plays on. But Connolly is one of the great cutback runners in college football. Steve Walsh has another year after this. Of eligibility remaining at Miami, but he could graduate. And you think about Bernie Kosar coming out early. And uh, this young man has some pro potential. He's out of St. Paul, Minnesota, and one of the proudest men here, his father, who's with John Docker. John? Thank you, Brent. I'm with uh, Bill Walsh. And how would you describe your son as an athlete, as a quarterback? Well, always intelligent, using his head all through high school, Creighton High School. He just showed it right then. He threw the ball away. What, why do you choose Miami? Well, he, uh, he's in international finance. Um, his fifth year uh, graduate. But as an athlete, why do you choose to come to Miami? Well, behind, uh, say, following Testaverde, Kozar, uh, I think he thought he could do that. The great Hopefully quarterback tradition. What did he tell you before the game about the game plan for Miami? Well, that they were going to work on the on their uh, linebackers. They certainly have. Congratulations. Thank you. Now back to you, Brent. International finance. An expert in the yin, the mark, the frank, the pound, and also the completed pass here tonight against the Seminole defense. And Steve Walsh has made himself very proud. Bigger than you might imagine. Stands 6'3", about an inch taller than Erickson. They're roommates when they go on road trips and then on Saturday night here at home before home games. Miami will punt the ball again. And Tim Kalal has held up here tonight. Deion Sanders looking for a little magic. Well, either that or you think Bobby Bowden really at this point has got to go all out and try to block a punt. Last time he did try to set up Deion Sanders before. Deion Sanders had himself an interesting summer, and they, they run the fake, and the snap was there. Everybody hesitates. Kalal had all day, and he throws the pass complete. They get a first down, but there's penalty flags down on the far side. Penalty flags came down. It looked all over like a busted play, and that the officials had sounded the whistle or something. <laughs> Tim Kalal just stood there and uh, eyed the field. Well, I think Jimmy Johnson was expecting the rush, the punt rush, and that's why they had the fake on. They see Kalal threw the ball to a backup tight end, Bethel, number 93, I believe it was. Bobby Bowden comes off the sideline at once. I think the question is whether <laughs> Bethal was uh, lined up on the inside of the formation or the, at the end of the line of scrimmage and to make him eligible. I think that's the issue. To see pick 99 there, Pat. The, the Florida wow. State coaches are, are very upset. 
It's going to be a first down off a fake punt. So not only has Florida State been unable to block a punt here tonight, but now Jimmy Johnson gets the pleasure of running a fake punt for a first down with a 24 to nothing lead. And it wasn't even the punt block rush. I mean, <laughs> that should not have worked against that defense, believe me. Oh, the Seminoles are flat. They could be in for a tough, tough week of practice when they get back to Tallahassee. Gary steps for a couple of yards into the heart of that Seminole defense. Well, let's find out what else is going on, and here's Jim Nance. Well, Brent scores from around the Southwest Conference. Defending champion Texas A&M now 0-2 on the season after the loss to LSU. Texas Tech lost its opener at home. Baylor beat UNLV. And Coach Ken Hatfield of Arkansas on the hot seat for not scoring enough points. His Razorbacks scored the most points since 1947 in that victory over Pacific. Let's go back to Brent and Pat. Jim, that's one thing you could never accuse Jimmy Johnson of, and that's not scoring enough points. Never in his life will he be in the hot seat for that. Almost intercepted there on the far sideline. Terry Sanders got a hand on it. Ball was intended for Hill, the wide receiver. Walsh would like to give Hill a big gain in this game. He could be the the standout wide receiver for the Hurricanes because of his speed. Well, he's brought his wide receivers very along very slowly here this evening. I think you're right. I think they're going to work them into this offense as the season goes on. He's dumped the ball off short most of the night, but as the season goes on, he wants to heal and Dawkins be able to catch the big plays over the middle. To correct myself if I said Terry Sanders. I have said it a couple of times tonight. His first name is Tracy. No relation to Deion Sanders, both in the Seminole defensive backfield. Flag down, taking too much time. The officials step in, and while we've got an opportunity, let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to those players who've been singled out for their performance in areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. The winners are from Florida State, Joey Ionata, the offensive line. He's from Dunedin, Florida, and Steve Walsh from Miami. That finance major from St. Paul, Minnesota, and Toyota donates a check of the amount of $1,000 to both Florida State and Miami. Money, incidentally, goes to the general scholarship fund and not to the athletic departments. Third down, Walsh throws incomplete and out of bounds under pressure that time and saw his receiver covered. That's about the fifth time tonight, as you can see, and he's upset with his receivers. He's expecting the receiver to break deep. And this is a different Steve Walsh than a year ago, too. He wasn't this uh, emphatic uh, with his receivers a year ago. He can show uh, the confidence that he has. 1976 was Coach Bowden's first year at Florida State. That's the only time he's been shut out. Has 12.39 to get something going here. Sanders will let that one bounce dead. This time, it takes another Miami roll. Then on the 11-yard line, we get an opportunity to check in with Jim Nance in New York. Brent, uh, some scores now from the Pac-10. Arizona over Oregon State. About two minutes left in that game. The Beavers will now suffer their 12th consecutive Pac-10 loss. UCLA 31 to nothing at halftime. Three touchdown passes for Troy Aikman. Terry Donahue going for his 99th win at UCLA. Very comfortable margin there for the Bruins. And Washington State on the road over Illinois. First road win since 1985 for the Washington State Cougars. Total offense, 601 yards for Washington State. Back to Brenton Peck. All right, Peter Tom Willis pulls it out now on first down. Batted away as Big Mark came rolling in and got a paw on it. That's one of the other things this Miami front four do, Brandon. They really get their hands up. Over the course of the year, they deflect maybe 10, 15 balls just by getting those hands up. Well, if this holds up, there's no indication it won't. Won't the voters have an easy choice tomorrow in the AP poll and the coaches? UPI poll, the USA Today poll. Who goes to number one? You've got to consider the Hurricanes, the defending national champions, and the show they put on here tonight. But Nebraska, they've been impressive coming back and winning again here today is trying to score free as Dexter Carter with a nice run for the Seminoles out to the 21 yard line. 
second largest crowd in the history of Miami Hurricane football, 77,836. Willis under pressure from Mark. Well, Mark has played himself a whale of a ball game, and as we said earlier, what he does is get those hands on the offensive guard right away, and it gives him the chance to get by him and make the play. He's right there in the middle of your screen. See, he does the swim technique right in the guard. Gets his hands on him, gets rid of the offensive guard, and puts the hit on Willis. It is just this side of unbelievable that a team can lose as much talent as the Hurricanes did. Now, think about the players who've gone to the National Football League. Players are going to see tomorrow. And they have been able to reload this football team. It is the greatest testimony I know to the number of outstanding players state of Florida. That was the subject of a magazine article by Sports Illustrated last week, and only one thing in that article really angered the folks down here in Miami, and that's when they referred to Bowden as the king of the road at 48-24-2. and two. They wanted to point out to Mr. Mulvoy and SI that Jimmy Johnson's 21-1 and one on the road with 19 straight in the regular season. Wow. There's the homegrown athletes these two schools have. From the state of Florida, 52 Florida State, and more than that right here in Miami. Hard hammer down. Barry. You know, the interesting thing about that graphic that we just showed, it used to be you ought to be able to, you could find the throwers and the catchers in Florida, but now they're even, the state is even developing big linemen. Both these teams have big linemen from the state. Yeah, I guess they used to go up to Pennsylvania and Ohio to get their linemen, but uh, no more. Willis pulls out, throws complete to Carter, who's out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That's good for a first down for the Seminoles. 11-08, and the faces on that far sideline will tell you the story. After, the, after a game of nine, it's first down well, the 40-yard line. have to really recoup, but they have a chance of still having a very, very successful year. Now, what about the possibility of coming in to a season, preseason number one, and all the publicity and hype surrounding your opener, and then you're dealt a crushing defeat. Uh, does that put the entire season in jeopardy for a football team? It's going to be a tough task for Bobby Bowden, but that's what a good head coach has got to be able to do. He's got to be able to handle that with his team this week. I think Tom Berlin must have pulled out about a count too early on that far side that time and flags come down all over the place and that's Deion Sanders who during the summer signed a baseball contract with the New York Yankees organization in college athletics you can play professionally in one sport and still retain your amateur status in another George Steinbrenner who has been close to the Florida State program ever since Dick Hauser was down there signed him to a contract calling for sixty thousand dollars plus the Yankees agreed to pay his tuition this year at Florida State. I believe you give up your athletic scholarship if you do sign professionally. And uh, Deion Sanders rose all the way to Triple A at Columbus in the rookie league. This was Fort Lauderdale he played. And he really has major league potential. But even though those stories you've read about him becoming the next Bo Jackson, uh, <laughs> Deion says that it really is not possible for a defensive back. He says you can hand Bo the ball and let him run. He knows what to do and he can miss a few games, but a defensive back has to be there all the time practicing against the great wide receiver. So it isn't likely we're going to see Deion try two of them. Willis back almost, and it is finally intercepted. Shannon on the ricochet. Penalty markers are down on the return. There's another one as Shannon battles his way inside the 25. The penalty markers were thrown after the interception, indicating there may have been a clip on Miami. At any rate, it is a 32-yard return by Shannon, and this is a clinical beating being administered by the Hurricanes here tonight. Shannon is their strong side linebacker. He ordinarily doesn't get into a lot of pass coverage with that. He got that interception off a of deflection. A couple of Hurricanes had a chance at it. <laughs> he is one of the real characters on this team. You can see in the middle of the screen, I think Bernard Clark was the first one as he drops back and had a chance to intercept it. It wasn't Clark went over his head. That was Bubba McDowell, number 48, goes right through his hands and then through Ellis's hands, and there is Shannon. Three orange jerseys around the ball. That's good team defense, obviously. 
was a nice job of running with the ball. There's the flag as they called the, the clip. He made like a fullback there, didn't he? Sure did. I was mentioning he is one of the characters on this football team. A year ago, he put a heat bomb in Danny Stubbs' helmet before a game. Most guys do that before practice, and even before a game. It was a helmet, huh? It was a helmet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard the uh, Miami, to change the subject as quickly as I can, I heard the uh, Miami student body uh, chanting goodbye over there to their counterparts from Tallahassee. I'm not surprised that Miami is going to win this game, but I am shocked that at 10.30 that you chant that. 24 to nothing. Miami leading Florida State. The Seminoles have turned the ball over four times in this game. And I believe Miami only has one turnover so far. That's exactly what it is. Four to one in that category. The defense for Miami, if anything, is better than it was a year ago. And I never thought I'd say that tonight with Benny Blades not out there. And the rest of his buddies from that defensive secondary, but they have thoroughly dominated a real good offensive line and some fine running backs here so far, and they're still tearing wide holes in that defensive unit of the Seminoles. Well, the American League East up for grabs. Let's find out from Jim Nance what happened with the Red Sox. Certainly is up for grabs. First, Milwaukee moved within five games of Detroit with a 7-3 victory. Red Sox can tie the Tigers with a win tonight. Larry Parrish has hit a home run for the Red Sox to tie it one all in the top of the seventh. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Jim, thank you. Walsh has the Hurricanes up at the line of scrimmage. This is Kroll, the backup tailback, brought down at the 40-yard line. Larry Parrish, addition at midseason around the All-Star break, and... Uh, he has uh, brought a new attitude and a fresher bat to the Red Sox than he displayed now with the Texas Rangers. Well, confidence is such a delicate thing. This Florida State team came into this game with great confidence, and Bobby Bowden's really going to have to spend some time building that back up this week. You know, up in Tallahassee when we were in there earlier in the week, I still can't get over that haunting phrase about and how he meant it. If we lose, we'll have to eat that rap video. He was a coach not happy about that. Kroll smashes inside the 50-yard line for a first down before Shiver brings him down. A 13-yard run. So this was the top 10 in college football this week. This is the AP poll, I believe. Florida State was first. Nebraska after winning the kickoff classic second. Oklahoma, Clemson, UCLA, Miami, Auburn, USC, Iowa, and Michigan. So the big change will be how high will Miami rise and how far will Florida State fall in the polls right now. Walsh is going to that far side for a first down. That's Randall Hill with Deion Sanders on the coverage. And all great quarterbacks have tremendous anticipation, and that's what Steve Walsh did there. Randall Hill went down and broke to the out. It was a very long throw. He was out of the right hash mark, but he led the ball before Hill made the break, and that's why it was an easy completion. Hey, wouldn't it be something if one of those Montana State players up in Gainesville won the lottery here in Florida? <laughs> he took that cash only back be, to Montana? Only be fitting, wouldn't it? <laughs> First and ten now for Walsh and the Hurricanes. Throws incomplete. Let's check in again with John Docker. Doc. Thank you, Brent. You know, it's only September 3rd, the beginning of the football season, and yet there are six bowl representatives, including Tom Ferdina from Fiesta Bowl. Tom, what are you doing here? Why did you come out? Well, this is not a scouting trip. Uh, we had Miami a couple years ago. We had Florida State last year. We like to think they're our friends. And I want to come down and see a great ball game. Couldn't get a ticket. I figured I'd wear my yellow jacket and get on and see a great game. And are you? Go ahead. Are you surprised? Uh, yes, I thought it would be much closer. I could not believe that... Uh, of the dominance of the Miami uh, line. They're just they're just uh, doing the job. Well, thanks, Tom. Now back to you, Brent. Second and ten. Walsh under pressure drops it off incomplete and then takes the hit. Something that he has done all night long. Doesn't take the sack, waits for the last moment, throws the incompletion. 24-13, Arizona win in the Pac-10. And UCLA up by 31 and an impressive debut by Troy Aikman. 
the man to beat. I know you're a USC quarterback. No, I, I know you. I'm going to give you a lot of room, <laughs> Rodney Pete. I'm going to keep the alums off your back. Out well, there. I, have a very, I think Aikman's the, the group leader right now. Well, I think he is definitely the favorite going in. But Terry Donahue, the coach, I think, at UCLA, doesn't get enough credit either. He's done a marvelous job of recruiting athletes out there. Off third and ten and a fake by Walsh. Throwing for Hill and knocked away at the last instant by Leroy Butler, number six. Well, it looked like Leroy uh, Butler really had his hand all over the receiver's back when the ball was in the air. And Hill didn't have a chance to catch it. You know, he got his left hand out there. I take that back. He got his left hand out of the way and made a very nice play on the ball. Carlos Huerta. Carlos Huerta comes onto the field to attempt a field goal. This one of 51 yards. He made his first one tonight of 39. Then he missed attempts from 59 and 37 yards. So this one, a 51, and the snap is bobbled. And Sandifer was forced to pick it up. And he is tackled by Kevin Grant. And the Seminoles will take over right there with 8.05 to go. And the Seminoles in need of a miracle here. They trail Miami 24 to nothing. Now, Florida State plays Southern Mississippi, is it, next week? Next week, yeah. But in two weeks, they got a tough one. They must go up to Death Valley to take on Clemson. Right now, they trail by 24, and we'll be right back. Long trip home for Coach Bowden and the Florida State team, but tomorrow he'll probably check in on what some of his former players are going to do. 12.30 Eastern time at CBS. We'll start it off with the NFL today. Dick Butkus will make his debut with Irv Cross and Will McDonough. We look forward to that. And that's the lineup of games that we'll have right after the NFL today, and uh, there's some good ones, especially that 49er Saints game. Are the Saints ready to challenge for a divisional title? We're going to be finding out, and the rest of our lineup, the Phoenix Cardinals taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. So Coach Bowden over there on the far sideline. Come about Wednesday, and he'll probably be able to smile and tell a couple of stories. He's one of the friendliest men you'll ever be around. I'm sure this one has to hurt a lot. He's already been beaten three straight years by Jimmy Johnson. He may be way past Wednesday. Deflected and almost picked off by Shannon again. You know, when uh, Bowden was 13 years old, he was confined to bed for a year with rheumatic fever. And the family doctor up home in Alabama told him he'd never play football again. And Coach Bowden says, that's why we changed the doctors. He's a lifelong football man who really his only other passion, his family, lovely wife Ann and their six children. He does love to play golf, but long about August 1st, he puts the sticks away, and, and that's it. He doesn't pick them up again. And you can believe he will not have a pitching wedge in his hand this week. There's a son who's a head coach at his old alma mater. Up at Sanford. Up yeah. At Alabama. Willis deflected. Stopped out of bounds. Barry there with the coverage. And he has another son who is an assistant coach on the Sanford team, plus... Still another son who's an assistant with wow. Coach Curry at Alabama. And he, he's got a son who teaches religion at San But he says, that's the black sheep of the family. <laughs> the family affair. It really is with Coach Bowden. So tough in, in football. I always thought that in baseball, you know, Pat, you can, you can turn around, you go to the ball, you take a lick, you know, something. Yeah. But you're at the ballpark the next day. Boy, football is agonizing. That week seems like about three months. All that big buildup in hype. Preseason number one. And then Come across state. A real ambush down here in the Orange Bowl. Willis airs it out. Trying to get something going. Incomplete at the five-yard line. That was Bruce Lassane. And coverage was Donald Ellis, one of the great stories. Ellis, a year ago, up in Tallahassee, blew out his knee on the last touchdown catch by Lewis. He did not play the rest of the year. And after an operation and rehab, and he said what a strange feeling it was that night of the Orange Bowl when they won the national championship. And he said, I really didn't feel like I was a part of it. And I so wanted to come back that's this year and improve something. You know, that's a strange phenomenon around football. But injured players really don't ever feel a part of a team. It happens all across the land and in pro football as well. Seven minutes and 45 seconds. The Orange Bowl, Miami 24, Florida State nothing. Willis will replace Chip Ferguson. A rifle throw complete. And a 
first down. Here's a man, Reggie Johnson, the backup tight end number 80, who caught that ball. They are very high in this man, think he's got some speed to get deep, and that's what you need at the tight end position. He's a little inconsistent, and that's why he doesn't start, but he's got the speed to make the big play. Oh, Willis zips that one for a 17-yard gain, and the ball is down to Miami's 38-yard line. Williams and Dexter Carter, the running backs. Carter goes out. Intercepted. Kenny Berry. Another turnover by the Seminoles here tonight. And it all starts with a defensive front for Miami. They have been just draped all over the quarterbacks, and when they haven't been right on them, they've pressured them into early throws and high throws, and it happens just again. They crowd the ball, they get off on the count beautifully, they get the hands up, so it's tough to follow through, and there is Barry making a very athletic interception. And what... Dejection on the bench by the quarterback who serves up the interception. Elation for a young quarterback by the name of Craig Erickson who gets some playing time here. And on first down, he hands the ball off to Fred Highsmith, the cousin of Alonzo Highsmith. In fact, his nickname is not Alonzo Highsmith, <laughs> number 31. Think he gets asked that enough? I would say. No, Miami really spreads Injury the, on that, yeah. excuse me, Pat, That's that quite right. far That's, side. Uh, Freeman, Corian Freeman, number 10, who's played very well tonight, by the way. But Miami, Miami really spreads the ball around. The running backs have caught six passes tonight, the wide receiver six, and the tight end six pass receptions. 6.48 to go. Erickson hands off to Walters. So Tracy Waiters is in the game, along with Fred Highsmith. Got tremendous depth on this Miami team in the skilled position. Crowell, who we've seen a lot tonight, number 20, has really had a had a big evening, and we didn't expect that kind of evening from him. Cleveland Gary also, but Crowell is going to be a very, very fine part of the supporting cast for the Miami team. Third down, four yards to go for the first down. And he hands it to Waiters. And he closes for the first down. The Seminoles have not played well. And everyone on that football team, including the coaching staff, has to be disappointed. Four interceptions, one fumble, a missed field goal, and five penalties. First down. Run the draw. Keep the clock moving. Highsmith. Jimmy Johnson's familiar with championships. He coached one. And then as a player, he was the nose guard on a championship team at Arkansas under Frank Broyles. As a young man, he played, and Barry Switzer was an assistant coach there. You don't like Switzer. They share one thing in common that I really think is so very important for a coach in athletics today, in football or basketball. Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer get along with black athletes about as well as any of the coaches that I'm ever around. And they really enjoy playing for Coach Johnson and Coach Switzer out in Oklahoma. Second down. Raiders coming around. Still another first down. And uh, Highsmith is impressive here. He followed Waiters on that block. Got a little daylight. He runs a little bit like a lot of the high knee action. You know, talking about Jimmy Johnson, too, uh, Brent, one of the things I think it's toughest to do is maintain a college football program. Remember, he has played really in three championship games, lost two of them the two previous years, of course, won a championship a year ago, but he's had his team at a high level of play the last four years. You bet. He was loose all week. Not remarkably loose uh, coming up to this big game. He felt very good. Uh, they bring a defensive back on a blitz. They managed to knock the quarterback down a little late. Erickson yells something, too, at the blitzer. Erickson unhappy about what just happened out there. Number 37, Shiver, came after him, and he hit him well after the handoff. The official, the referee, would have thrown a flag, but it was sort of out of his viewing range over there on the other side. 
Jackson, a very highly regarded quarterback here at Miami, in for Steve Walsh. They bring the blitz again, and this time it is picked up. And the pass thrown complete on that near side. Slick catch by Hill. Well, we've got an opportunity. Let's check in with Jim Nance again in New York. Jim, what do you got? Well, Brent, it's early in the season, but it could be a long season for several teams. Kansas State of the Big Eight, Big Eight opens with a loss to Tulsa. Wisconsin of the Big Ten beaten by Western Michigan. And Jerry Faust, Akron team, a loser by one point. Akron Division I this year. Now the question is, will it be a long season for Florida State, Brent? All right, Jim, thank you. And Stan Shiver was just taken out of the game by the Florida State coaching staff. As, uh, boy, Highsmith is putting on a show here now. Be some backup defensive players out there. And Florida State down right now, but Highsmith has rushed for 30 yards and four carries. A tremendous leg action by Highsmith. Really tough to get him around the legs. The clock moves inside of three minutes. This is one of the toughest weeks a player can have after you have a humiliating defeat like this. And Bobby Bowden really has his hands full getting this team emotionally ready for next week. They blitz again, and so Erickson throws to Hill. I think that the Seminoles feel that as long as Johnson's going to put it up, they're going to start bringing blitzes from the, the defensive backfield right now. 2.30, 24 to nothing. Jimmy leading. Well, this is nice for Craig Erickson, too. Jimmy Johnson wants to give Craig Erickson a little bit of playing time each week. Feels he's awfully talented. If something were to happen to Steve Walsh, wants a quarterback that's had some game experience, so this is good for Erickson. On second down, Waiters. Crazy Waiters with the ball. This will be a third down. The clock coming inside of two minutes. You know, as we look at Craig Erickson, and you mentioned it uh, earlier in the broadcast, Brent, really it was about a series away that Steve Walsh was going to get yanked in last year's Florida State game, and Craig Erickson was going to be the guy, perhaps, that would be the quarterback for the rest of the year. But Steve Walsh answered the challenge. Erickson didn't get the chance, and of course, Walsh went 12-0. Uh, and 0. Oh, Erickson trying to impress the coaching staff now. Third down, and he pulls straight back. Touchdown, Miami. Pee Wee Smith, number 18, puts another six on the board for the Canes. They may not be as good as they were a year ago, but somebody's going to have to prove it yeah. on the football field. Try to convince me. I'll tell you, that ball got there quickly from Craig Erickson, didn't it? He had, to, he had some zip on that ball. Miami gets a week off. And they will watch Notre Dame and Michigan next Saturday night because their next opponent at Ann Arbor, they'll take on Schembechler and the Wolverines. Both Lou Holtz and Bo have appointments with Miami as the extra point hit by Huerta. In fact, when Coach Holtz was at the kickoff classes, he said, all our fans up in South Bend, they can't wait for the Hurricanes to come up there. But I can. And we can see why here tonight. 31 to nothing. When you have a live arm like Craig Erickson does, this is what you want to do. Get the ball to receiver on the move. This is what Miami has done. Florida State has not. Get the receiver while he's moving. 31 Florida State nothing. The route in the Orange Bowl. The defending national champions proving that they are still kings of the hill until someone knocks them off. They have manhandled Florida State here tonight. Fumble at the two. Let's go downstairs to John Dockley. Doc, what do you got? Thank you, Brent. I'm with Jimmy Johnson's son, Chad, who happens to go to FSU. Of course, his dad coaches here. What's it like? Where's your allegiance? Well, I'm a big Florida State fan for every week, except for uh, the Miami game, so I have to cheer for my dad. What's it going to be like when you go back up to Florida State? Hopefully, it'll be, uh, I won't get too much, too much uh, flag from the guys, but um, I can't beat a win. Why did you choose Florida State over Miami? Florida State's a really good school, and 
I just sort of wanted to get away, get away from home for a little bit, and you know, go go away to college. So that's the main reason. Okay. Good luck to you now. Thank Thanks, you. Brent. Casey Weldon on the move with his first throw. He goes to Edgar Bennett, who's out of bounds on the near side at the 45. Coach Johnson has two sons. You just met one of them, Chad, who's the student at Florida State. Their other son, Brent, will enter law school this year. So Jimmy and Linda Kay with two sons. Linda Kay during the summer, while Jimmy was traveling around <laughs> studying some of the NFL camps, she got an airplane and went over to Africa and toured all those beautiful wild animal parks over there in Kenya. First down for the Seminoles. 114 away from being shut out. Complete. And his hurricane defense wants nothing better than to shut Florida State out right now. Weldon has a nice little live arm. That time he threw number 83, Dave Roberts, on the outside. Got a lot of substitutions here for Florida State. Well, maybe somebody in Tallahassee won the lottery tonight. <laughs> maybe there's a reason to, to smile up there in that nice old town up north. 31 to nothing, Miami. We'll be right back. South Bend, Indiana. Lou Holtz and the Fighting Irish will start a new campaign against a tough foe, the Wolverines of Michigan. Bo always has a violent, hard-hitting defense and a team effort. So Michigan and Notre Dame next Saturday at 9 Eastern time on CBS. I don't know about you, but there's always something special about being in Notre Dame, their stadium. You bet. Great arena to watch college football. Inside of a minute, Weldon intercepted another turnover by the Seminoles. Roland Smith, number 16, picks off Weldon's pass. That is six turnovers by the Seminoles to one for the Hurricanes here tonight. You know, there's an old adage in football, never throw the ball late down the middle. That's what happened there to Weldon. Through a lame duck down the middle, Roland Smith made an easy interception. It's up to Bobby Bowden, I think, now, Brent, to really help this team recover. You're going to have an awful lot of disappointed young men, but young men can be resilient. Bobby Bowden has to work on their confidence this next week to get them back in, in the right frame of mind. Waiters, one out of bounds on the near side. Waiters and Highsmith are the running backs for Erickson. Kelleher and Aaron, two of the receivers. As Jimmy Johnson doing something here tonight, he probably did not expect to be able to do against the Seminoles, and that's take a look at his depth. And Hi, Mom. Second Hi, and third Mom. teamers. How you doing? I love you. The game goes back. Florida State in the second half of this round has had four interceptions and three punts on their seventh possession. Miami wins it, 31 to nothing. Bobby seeking out Jimmy Johnson there at midfield. And a very concerned and upset Bobby Bowden will take his troops licking their wounds back to Tallahassee. Let's get on to John Dockery with the other side, Jimmy Johnson. Thank you, Brent. Jimmy, you told us you had a good young team untested. What did you find out tonight? Well, we got better. We made some mistakes the second half, but I, I'm really pleased with the discipline of our football team because, you know, they really prepared well for this game. They prepared in a business-like manner. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of hype for uh, over going crazy. I, they just approached it in a business-like manner. Big play uh, right before the half, getting the touchdown. I think it took the win out of Florida State sales. You seem to have Florida State's number, wasn't it? Well, we had time to prepare for them this year. Uh, last year, we came off of Florida and Arkansas and then had to go into Tallahassee. But uh, our guys worked real hard. They prepared well. But you know, it's, it's only one game. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. We won one game. And now you got to be ranked number one going in next week. Oh, please. But it's too early for rankings. we got to play Michigan here in a couple of weeks. Okay. Congratulations, Jimmy. Now okay, back to you, Brent. He'd love to stay underdog the rest of the season. Coach Jimmy Johnson comes away with a big win, and we'll be back.
losing streak.